We're going to talk a lot about the Oscars, aren't we? Oh, yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was funny because the people who fucked that up, (laughs) the day before the Oscars, they had a full bio on... On the BBC. It's like, it's like you were setting this up. Jeez. It's like you were setting this up. You guys are the only two who know this. And the BBC was going like how much, how important their job is. And then they fuck it up. <laughs> it is awesome. They had one job. One <laughs> job. They, they had to count the votes and make the envelopes <laughs> and then hand them out. <laughs> count the votes. Make the envelopes. <laughs> And pass them out. Well, they did do that, Kyle. But I mean, in nowhere did in your step did you have did you verify that it had to be the right people? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, you didn't you didn't say they had had the right amount. You just said you had to count them. They did do that. <laughs> Obviously, they are out of a job now, which is kind of well, sad. But it's sad, but when you have one job, <laughs> if you I'm fail a, that job, if I'm the, if I'm those people's bosses, yeah, I'm kind of like, okay, I, I mean, I hate to do this, but what do you want from I me? I feel bad for them because they made the Oscars good this year. <laughs> yeah, they did <laughs> make the Oscars good this year, man. <laughs> uh, speaking of which. Welcome to the UGO podcast. Uh, and, you know, uh, we, uh, you know, I always thought that we would never win an award, but here, here it is. It's, it's finally here, uh, for best new podcast, uh, uh, award uh, to the most creative podcast award. And the award, and the award goes to Cereal. Moon, Moonlight. What the fuck? <laughs> they got that too, those sons of bitches. God damn it. Uh, but yes, uh, who is lamenting, uh, lamenting Moonlight, uh, taking away another award? Uh, it's me, Nick the Merc with a mic, and my fellow unapologists. With great vengeance, Travis. And Kyle. And yeah, we are gonna be talking about a little bit of the Oscars today, obviously. Uh, but, As we already have. <laughs> but bef- before that, we actually, uh, we have a, a lovely interview today, too, which is gonna be the, our main subject of the show. We had, uh, uh, I did another lovely interview with the We Are Era crew, because we discussed some of the latest and some of the, some earlier gaming controversies as well, uh, considering the PewDiePie thing and a couple other recent, uh, re- recent controversies. We, we, we discussed gamer culture overall and, uh, some, the ups and downs and maybe some of the things we can do to, to correct it a little bit. But uh, also in the show, we're going to have to talk about the trailers. A couple trailers, big trailers dropped this week. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have to talk about that. And, of course, the news that we always love, the geeky news. And uh, even before all of that, because with Trisha, we got to do the announcements. And uh, in honor of the uh, Oscar-level uh, uh, caliber of the news this week, I figured the announcements, we have to bring in a, a real ringer, someone with some real prestige. So Have they won an uh, Oscar? So, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Sean, have you won an Oscar? I don't believe I have, but uh, I think I'll take yours, you shit of a bitch. <laughs> don't you ever mention my failings to me again, or you'll get a pop in the mouth. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Uh, and introducing Sean Connery, uh, <laughs> you know, giving us the introduction that we so deserve. He's got an Oscar for Best Actor in a Supporting Role. In a for the Untouchables. Role. Hmm? You got you. I'm right, I did. Wait, the Untouchables. <laughs> really? That movie? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just like a whop. Bring an, bring an Oscar, Oscar to a, a Grammy fight. <laughs> or some other. I don't know. That joke got away from me. <laughs> I didn't write the fucking movie. Or well, anyway, if you'd like to support the podcast, you can do so by giving them a lovely review on iTunes. And you could, you know, if you give them a five star, five star review, they'll read whatever it goes on there, word for word. That's guaranteed. But just keep it light on the ashes, because uh, I I don't want to be reading the ashes too bad. If they have me, if they bring me on for that, I can't, I can't. She, I can't do it. I can't do it. God damn it. Uh, but of course, you can also contact them through the Facebook page and give them a like while you're there. And uh, the Instagram and Twitter, that's at UGO Podcast. That's always the same. And give them that tweet, the good tweet, or, you know, always a good tweet. Uh, of course, we always want to, also want to mention Kyle doing his Let's Play videos 
I mean, I don't really like watching the video games, <laughs> but even I got to admit, they're pretty entertaining to watch. Uh, at least, at least for a little bit before I take my, take my traditional nap. You know what's <laughs> also interesting to watch? Look at you extraordinary gentlemen. Don't you ever fucking bring that up again. <laughs> I swear to God, I'll come at you. Nick, why are guests always attack me? Why would you bring uh, bring up leg? Why would you bring up leg? <laughs> it needed to be said. <laughs> I swear to God, if you if, if you bring it up again, that um, that movie will not only end my, but your career. <laughs> anyway, Nick. Please, but, Sean, you were going to retire anyway. <laughs> I was. Uh, but, you know... Uh, I thought I would go out a little more on top than that. It was a little disappointing. <laughs> uh, just like uh, Indiana Jones, the Crystal King with the Crystal Skull. At least I didn't go out on that one. <laughs> at least I avoided that. La- at least I dodged that one. That mm-hmm. bullet. But uh, speaking of dodge- dodging bullets, uh, Nick, I'm going to hand this back off to you because this has been a fucking disaster. Good luck with your fucking show. Thank you, Mr. Connery. Uh, that actually went better than I thought. Yeah, actually, actually that was that one. That one he went didn't about physically attack anybody. No, which was surprising because uh, I do, I could use a sock in the mouth, hmm. you know, just, and with no sexual harassment. <laughs> right, it's nice and refreshing. It is. It was nice and refreshing. And Sean Connery, of all people, didn't sexually harass people on the show. Uh, maybe so we should next get time more... we should bring Bill Cosby. <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Damn, dude! Yeah, that's, you know, now that I think about it, we might have to have Bill on next week. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. No! And I don't know. Next week we talk about no. rights. <laughs> well, first things first, Travis. Uh, does this rag smell? Get like the fuck out of here, Cosby! <laughs> Nobody likes you anymore. Kyle, does this rag smell like? Oh, I know, oh. and I do not want your Jello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want your Jello. <laughs> That's gonna be the name of his of his, of his biography. <laughs> I don't want your Jello. I don't want your oh. Jello. That's gonna be the name of the, the uh, title of this episode. <laughs> Ugh. But on the on the on the note of violating Jello, I think we can get uh, into some of the other further announcements here. Because I did want to mention that we're going to be at PlatCon. Uh, as you are listening to this, we are at PlatCon, actually. Come visit us. Uh, so, yes, come visit us at our booth. Me and Travis, because Kyle uh, we'll be, uh, had a last... busy storming the castle. No! Uh, he, 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 good luck storming the castle. Uh, good luck storming the castle. Yeah. K- Kyle will be with us in spirit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going to be bad because... I last actually... minute meeting on a Saturday, so... I bought a new game for us to play there, too. Aww. Uh, Princess Bride, the uh, uh, You Killed My Father Prepared to Die game. <gasps> yeah. Wow, so I just made that reference out of nowhere. You, that, it was scary. That's I was like, awesome. He, I was like, did he see, was he following me? I was like, not following you. Yes. I, I have more t- things to do in my life than that. I was like, there's no way he could have, he set me up for that. Like, I couldn't believe it. But, uh, yeah, so definitely come and hang out with us. Uh, we're gonna be running panels. Uh, we'll have the, uh, anime pitch panel. Uh, we're gonna be playing anime pitch and all that good stuff. We're gonna have Super Fight Club. We're gonna be playing Super Fight. Uh, you know, bring all your geeky, angry, uh, uh, debate skills there. Uh, I know you, you geeks don't like to be, get into confrontations about who would win in a fight, but, you know, just, just bear with it. It is fun if you, if you, you know, get over that initial hurdle of, uh, you being a decent human being. Uh, <laughs> that, I did, you know, that was a little mean. I am, I'm a fully apologize for geek culture out there. Uh, I'm, I'm just a little off on the high of, uh, the video game culture we're gonna talk about later. But we're also gonna have our traditional trivia contest, and we're gonna be giving away prizes, and it's gonna be fun. And it's traditional, and, cause it's happened twice this <laughs> time. And you will be rewarded for all that useless knowledge that will never help you in anything else in your life, but it will help you here. So that is great. Uh, anyway. Uh, with that, we have an email to read. Ooh. We got Ed oh, right, that one. emailed us, and this was my fuck up on my part because I uh, I told Ed because he gave us this when we did the uh, watch along for Vampire Girl versus Frankenstein Girl. He he sent me an email that was absolutely an email hilarious. or a book. It was an email that was absolutely hilarious, and I told him I was going to read it on the next episode, and I completely forgot. Uh, so he, uh, sent me another, uh, email that was, that's, I think the title, title read, do we have beef? Because I'm a vegetarian and I don't play that way, boy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And I love you. Uh, so, and he, uh, cause he listened to our last week one and he was, uh, uh, did you read my- Waiting with bated breath. Yeah, did I, I, did I miss my email while I was listening at work? 
Why won't Gareg choose in me? <laughs> Why are you guys Pop Tarts pure Pop Tart purists? Am I next on Nick's murder list? Hopefully, all these questions and more will be answered on the next uh, uh, titty titty lating uh, titty late ting episode of the UGO podcast. Sorry, it's a pun joke in the middle because it's titillating, but it's late in the middle is is uh, ah. is you know is, is highlighted titty late ing late-ing, yeah. Uh, very clever, uh, uh, Otto Bro Ed. And here's the thing, too, is that, uh, I'm mispronouncing Otto Bro, Otto Bro Ed. Uh, cause the, the reason he made us watch Vampire Girl vs. Frankenstein Girl is that, uh, he said that the, the dirty deed is gone. Uh, that's, it was all I wanted and more. I told you this, uh, entire movie was filled with the fuck, uh, with what the fuck fuckery and delivered with, well, with the first ten minutes. Uh, you guys, your guys' reactions were exactly what I wanted, and the reason I, I spread yeah. the evil word of the film... It's pronounced Odobro, is it, Nick? <laughs> yes, it is. Insert, <laughs> insert Skeletor laugh. Uh, uh I'm gonna read down here, because it is a, a long email here. I'm gonna have to skip a little bit. Uh, but he goes on to say, like, uh, he did really enjoy the uh vampire girl versus frankenstein girl watch long and that's still up on our uh, on our back catalog if you guys want to check it out too he explains gone girl again a little bit uh a little defensive about it i don't know but i still think it's just super racist well th- only one of those girls was was gone girl yeah right? he, he mentions not- that it, it, the other one was just yes yeah, the other it. three were racist as fuck <laughs> uh yeah so he said he it didn't shock me personally, just culturally. Plus, I'm brown skinned Spanish boy, and you guys are white Wisconsinites. It's fair. Uh, you can just say Wisconsinites. Whites uh, is redundant. Uh, <laughs> no, there are plenty of other people living in in Wisconsin. Uh, they're imported, though. We make white people here. It's like our main export. Uh, that and booze. Uh, and cheese. <laughs> and cheese. Or does that just fall in the category of white people? And serial killers. Also that. Uh, but yes, they, uh, where, where is the kid thing he, he thought like, yes, uh, why he did say he loved Kyle kind of freaking out during it, like, uh, of his continued breakdown of like, Ed, why <laughs> are they still on this fucking roof? <laughs> like he's, uh, Kyle gets like, it starts to unravel as the movie uh, goes yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> But he he said he did this because of three reasons. One, I genuinely listen to your podcast and am a true fan. Two, Nick said he loved bad movies and this was indeed a bad movie. And three, the proper way to pronounce our name is not the Ota Bros, is is or is is not the Ota Bros, but the Oto Bros, like Otaku. If you listen to our podcast, I'm truly and truly noticed a senpai. You should have caught on. We only say it dozens of times in each episode. Uh, additional Skeletor laughter here. But seriously, you guys are troopers and who are true to your word, and I respect you for it. Much pinky pinky love, Otto Bro Ed. Pinky pinky love. So here's my, here's my thing, Ed. Uh, I do listen to your podcast on, not on the regular, because there's just, I listen to so many podcasts, but I check in every once in a while. And I know you guys pronounce it Otto Bro Ed. But it's the my weird rednecky kind of Wisconsin type accent that I can't pronounce. It's the same reason I have a hard time with uh with Eau Claire, and I keep calling it Eau Claire. <laughs> Eau Claire. Uh, I don't know what it is. I, I'm I'm really trying to. I will really try to refer to you as Oto Bro Ed from now on. But it's gonna be that weird Oto like that. I'm gonna put. Uh, I'm gonna put a, such a hard. <laughs> it's gonna be in. oat like the plant. Yeah, <laughs> oat. Oh, bro. It's basically oat O's. But if, uh, yeah, because my natural resource is to go out of bro, Ed. So I am I'm super sorry about that. I mean, and uh, if it makes you feel better, a lot of people pronounce his last name like a body part. <laughs> right? Nick Thighs. Nick Thighs. <laughs> uh, He's got thighs for days. It, it does sound like a very delicious entree. Uh, <laughs> and today, and today our special is Nick Thighs. Cooked up some nice barbecue sauce and some chitlins. That's white meat. Uh, man, the best white meat. The albino meat. Uh, but yes, uh, thank you, Ed, uh, for suggesting the movie and being a, a well, true fan not, listener. Not thanks for that. No thank you for that. <laughs> I had fun. I don't give a shit. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, but yes, uh, much love to you, Ota Bro Ed. There. You happy? Uh, anyway, let's get on to the regular news, shall we?
Sure. Because we got some Oscars to talk about. <laughs> Kyle's excited. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I actually slept through the Oscars because I wanted to take, I, you know, my alternate work schedule, I, I took a nap. Kyle kind of comes uh, running home and he's like, I, I'm starting to get up. I have a pop, I have a barrel of popcorn yeah. with me. And Kyle's like, oh my God, like, did you hear, did you hear about the Oscars, man? Did you hear? And I'm like, uh, no, what happened to that? Oh man, they fucked up, man, they fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, our norm, our new, normally cool Kyle was just like, oh shit, man. <laughs> you know, some super drama went down. I'm like, oh, what happened? So I, I go to the, go to the YouTubes and, uh, and see the clip. And yeah, so <laughs> the, the, it's a bit of a whoops. So for the two people on earth that don't know, Warren Beatty, uh, was supposed to announce the winner of best film. And he, <laughs> He looks at the card and he looks down confused and he looks to his, uh, his, uh, his co-star there, uh, fuck, what's, what's her name? He was in Bonnie and Clyde with, with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget, but she's like, you're impossible and, and rips the card from him and is like, La La Land. And of course everyone's like, yeah, we all knew La La Land would probably yep. win Best Picture. And then they give two acceptance speeches. And he, they just McCall, keep going. And they just keep going. And suddenly there's some commotion in the background and then there's some confusion and then some of the one of the Lala and directors is like, oh yeah, we lost by the way. Hmm? I'm like, wait, what? And then the little guy's like, no, wait, there's been a mistake. Moonlight, you won Best Picture. No, this is not a joke. Moonlight, you won Best Picture. Get up here. And everyone's looking around like, what is go? What? What? <laughs> What's going on? And ah oh, man, I could not stop laughing. Mm-hmm. Could not stop laughing because man, did the blame game. The blame game started on stage. On mm-hmm. stage because Jimmy Kimmel comes up like I blame Steve Harvey personally, <laughs> and then of course Warren Beatty has to come up and like defend himself like no, no okay look I want to explain because I know this is the only thing anyone's gonna be talking about for the next week, but the reason I hesitated was because it said Emma Stone for La La Land and I was confused because Emma Stone's not a movie. <laughs> 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 and, <laughs> yet <laughs> I mean, yet. it's not a movie yet. yet but after this <laughs> this is gonna be a movie now <laughs> and so and, that, and that's that's why I was looking at you confused I wasn't trying to be funny and I'm like well Warren Beatty you just you managed to be funny despite yourself yeah <laughs> And it's uh, even Jimmy. Uh, uh, Jimmy was like Warren, Warren. What did you do? What did you do? Uh, so yeah, that was amazing. Uh, I think I saw I saw some reactions to it that were like, you know what? Uh, some people were saying they should do this uh, every three or four years and just not tell us when it's going to happen <laughs> to keep us on on edge. Just keep us just to keep us on edge. Kind of like, oh, is this the year they're going to fuck up again? Is it, this it, gonna be? It would help ratings. I, I would say uh, apparently it didn't help this one's ratings. Maybe no. next year because well, uh, obviously it's at the end of the yeah. The 2017 Oscars had a broadcasting uh, ratings dip uh, mm. again, uh, but that's not surprising. Well, it's probably the millennials' fault. Well, uh, you know, more people are switching to a streaming service, uh, and I'm not sure if because it says broadcast ratings, so I think you could you you could stream it somewhere. Mm. I remember, right? Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure. So I'm not sure if those are counted in the in the broad because it just it does say broadcast ratings. But that's not, you know, too, it's not too surprising. Uh, the rest of the show was, it was okay. Uh, I watched uh, some highlights, uh, some highlights of it. Uh, the Trump bashing was pretty fun. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Kimmel actually tweeted him in the middle of the thing, just Donald Trump, you up. <laughs> uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, a lot of the, a lot of the acceptance speeches hearkened, you know, uh, uh, acceptance and, uh, and, uh, unity and all that. And then, uh, the, uh, what was it? The Iranian director, uh, that won best foreign mm-hmm. film. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh, refused to, uh, come That's with, him. he, he prepared a statement to be read there because he, uh, in protest of the Muslim ban. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, that, that was, that was pretty interesting. Uh, they had, uh, the chick from Moana sing the, uh, uh, how far I'll go song, mm. which was nice, and then something hit her in the face. And then, <laughs> uh, what did it hit her in the face? I think it was like a veil from in the background or something. Yeah, 
It didn't fuck her up though. She no. she go she went to town on it, and then they had someone else sing Ryan Gosling's song from La La Land, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. It's a bit sad, but uh, <laughs> he can't. Well, sing. now that you've watched the movie, you can you can agree that this... he can't sing. <laughs> He's doing that sexy, uh, breathy kind of whisper singing that uh, that people get away with. That he, he wasn't getting away with it even in the movie, honestly. No, not really. So yeah, people went ape shit over that last fuck up though, because Twitter was just all sorts of all over the place. Like the memes immediately started. Yep. People. Oh! Were like, People already were like, oh, actually, no, there's been a mistake. Hillary Clinton won the 2016 election mm. uh, as well. Uh, I saw a thing of, uh, of a draft house theater mm-hmm. saying, like, we will be showing a, a, a 34 millimeter print of Terminator next week. Or it might be Moonlight. We're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah the, people were saying, like, Warren Beatty just became the new host of Family Feud. Uh, <laughs> Uh, turns out the La Land is the is the Falcons of the Oscars. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, uh, but yeah, uh, La La Land is fake news. Uh, hashtag Oscars. Uh, but yeah, I think ultimately harmless. No, I mean, oh yeah, ultimately completely harmless. Uh, yeah, make sure that you figured out what happened and what went wrong so it doesn't happen again. Yeah, well, people are losing their jobs, but, so. Well, those two people are losing their jobs, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they said the accountants that they figured out behind that were in charge of making the, making the, the envelopes and stuff, they lost their jobs. Uh, they're, they actually... Well, they're not gonna be part of the Oscars again. Well, right. That's, that's what they're saying, and the Oscars are looking into the accounting company that hired them and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, which makes sense. But we said that at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, they they made it much more entertaining. It, it man, uh, uh, I I thought it was great. I thought I thought it was what a capper, what a yep. what a great twist. Uh, yep. I thought I thought M Night Shyamalan wrote the Oscars. For <laughs> yes, I, I thought it was like yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Bruce, Willis. I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure M Night Shyamalan tweeted that. <laughs> and Bruce Willis just shows up at the end like <laughs> <laughs> this is all an unbreakable sequel. <laughs> uh, uh, but oh, so fuck. Kyle, who, who? Which of us won then? Our little uh, betting game here. You actually won with under six. I'm gonna yeah. go out and buy you some sushi. I sushi. Well, sushi. Well, and only well, and all you can eat. So you can try all the sushi. See if you can find any. <laughs> okay, Kyle. Yeah, La La Land only won like uh, they only won six. Yeah, so you got both of the unders. Uh, both of the unders. I mean, I wasn't expecting it to hit eleven. I was hoping to get not Nick on a sucker bet on that <laughs> one. Yeah, I thought. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I thought they would get. I thought they would get to nine. To be completely honest, mm-hmm. I thought they get. I thought they would get high. Uh, but a lot of those, a lot of the users actually went to s- some other stuff in their their category. Like Kyle was predicting, like I think some like, eh, La La Land's gonna win enough. We'll give some of these. Yep. we'll spread the love a little bit. Mm. Yeah, especially since like. The tech depart the techies of the academy were gonna probably riot if a rival didn't win one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, let's just remind people that I had actually not seen La La Land before I made those <laughs> guesses. So, yep. I have seen it now, though. Yes, you have, and it was not gonna win best costuming. By the way, in other news, <laughs> in other news, Suicide Squad's an Academy Award-winning film. Yeah. Okay. So let me uh, preface this by saying. You know the team behind Suicide Squad. They actually did some really good, cool, cool stuff with Killer Croc's makeup. Yeah, uh, I made the joke last week of like oh, fuck them, like because of, of just painting Harley Quinn white. But they did some. I like Katana's outfit. Uh, the Killer Croc makeup. You got to give him on that. It was yep. very intricate. Yep. Yep. Uh, you might not agree with the design of say Harley Quinn or Joker, but you got to admit they pu- they made it look really neat in this real mm. world aspect. Uh. I would say it's not a completely undeserved Oscar. I'm just saying that, man, it pisses me the fuck off that well, DC won anything yeah, off of their the film. Movie Before Marvel. Deserve anything. Yeah, that is, that's some bullshit, man. I, I, uh, especially when you consider the fact that, hey, why does Boom, Captain Boomerang look like shit? Like, like, he, did, yeah. he doesn't look that great. Uh, and also Star Trek Beyond had some great makeup work yeah, in it yeah. too. So and they and, also painted people white. And El Diablo is a big stereotype. It's kind of neat. Like, and you know, uh, the aliens in Star Trek didn't have damage written on, on their face. And mm-hmm. like, so I, I, I don't know. I think that was a little bit weird. Uh, that they, 
don't know, I guess they must have just won it on Killer Croc because that's the only makeup. Yeah, that's, that, that's the only makeup that's really extensive and mm-hmm. really good looking. Yep. And it's weird because he's so not an important character in that film. I thought he was gonna die. He's not important at all to the story. So thank well, God. They, when we watched Assault on Arkham, that isn't yeah. that what he was there for? Was yeah, dying. Yeah, yeah well, he was stepped. He was King Shark there. Oh, okay, yeah. But you could, I could forgive you for interchanging them because there was, <laughs> there's no difference. <laughs> uh. But yeah, uh, consider me like a little bitter about that, but, uh, I guess it doesn't, they've already made the DVD, but I, I'm sure a repackage is on the way with like a, a super duper director's cut, uh, now Oscar winning Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, we don't want to give DC good things because they don't deserve them. Well, then it's like, oh, so none of the other Marvel films ever won on costuming, even though their costumes seem to be fucking on point every film. Seems kind of weird. Like, not mm-hmm. any of the Avengers films? Hmm? No, like Civil War. So, yeah, Civil War. See, what, what won for costuming this year? It wasn't Suicide Squad. Suicide no, won for makeup. they won for makeup and shit. Uh, costuming went to... Uh, shit, I think it went to Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Yes, it did. Um, yeah. Yes, it did. Uh, which also stay like, like, they, they, they really, uh, created a, a whole, like, different type of universe with the mm-hmm. mage, mage kind of 1940s look. So I, I can kind of get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, I marked that a little disappointing. Uh, Luke Cage, uh, tweeted about Mar- Marsha Ali winning for best actor for, mm-hmm. uh, Moonlight. And he, they, uh, they, the Luke Cage account on Twitter said, "All hail the king!" <laughs> <laughs> for uh, and then a little crown emoji for his role as Cottonmouth. So I thought that was funny. It's kind of sad that he died, though. Uh, yeah, but you know, uh, his his character, not him. Mar- yeah, Marshall, yeah, 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 yeah. Marshall, he's fine. Marshall, he's fine. He's okay. He's okay. Don't freak out. Uh, but uh, his, 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 Marvel's cut character Cottonmouth yeah. died. I, I was just realized, like, no, well, we'd have a bunch of people like, what? <laughs> Uh, we would be at least a little bit more dramatic saying that kind of news. But also, Disney won, uh, for, uh, Best Actor, uh, for, what was it, uh, Zootopia won, right? Yep. Yeah. Best Animated Future <clears throat> Uh, it won over Zoo- Kubo and the Two Strings and whatever the fuck mm. the Red Turtle is. And whatever the uh, fuck uh, My uh, Life uh, is a Zucchini, zucchini is. Which uh, pre- premiered this week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Jimmy Kimmel made a, a funny uh, joke about that, like where most people, are like, yeah, most that most people didn't see some of these movies, and it was kind of like poking fun at that, like that. I thought he did an okay job as hosting. Mm. Uh, I like Rick, Ricky Gervais myself. I think Ricky Gervais should hold host all award shows because he's not afraid to give it to give it to the <laughs> celebs a little bit. Uh, see, I really want to go see Moonlight though. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna catch it. I I, I do need to go see it because uh, mm-hmm. that I I've always heard good things about it. Uh, it was, I believe, it was almost a um, suck it up movie, but it wasn't showing in limited very well mm-hmm. here yet. So, but yeah, do you realize that Disney has now won nine out of the last ten Oscars for best animated f- feature? Well, they own most of the animated film studios now. So, well, let's see here. It's the list of Disney slash Pixar movies to win Best Animated Feature category. So it was The Incredibles, Ratatouille, Wall-E, Up, Toy Story 3, Brave, Frozen, Big Hero 6, Inside Out, and Zootopia. What was Brave going up against? I don't that, know that because last Brave year. was one of their weaker films. I'm I'm surprised that it won. But well, I don't... Tessa really likes Brave, but. Mm-hmm. I would say that that would have been a year that uh, another animated film could have t- taken it away from them, but it was 2012. I'm not sure what came out that year. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, we did we do make the joke that that's basically the Pixar award nowadays. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the uh, in uh, uh, other news we have uh, uh, speaking of, uh, Mar- Mar- of of Moonlight, we have another black film to talk about. Because we all got to see, went out to see Get Out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and Get Out, uh, is grossed a whopping 30.5 million during its first three days. Neat. And it had like a 2.5 million dollar budget, so. Oh boy, baby. So, that's a good sign. Uh, yeah, it is, it's gonna be, uh, quite the phenomenon, and, uh, apparently it has, like, no negative reviews like on Rotten Tomatoes uh, for, or critic critical reviews I yeah. should say. Uh, so 
uh, very interesting. <laughs> Because uh, <laughs> critics have to, actually have to be partial. <laughs> well, uh, well, apparently critics. Just oh, wait. There it. is one rotten on okay. on there now. Oh, there is one negative review. <laughs> Hunt them down. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if we want to talk a little bit, like and no, no spoilers, no spoilers for Get Out. But if we want to just talk a little bit about uh, how we thought about Get Out, I loved it. I loved it. I liked it. I love it. <laughs> Kyle, get your robot ass out. Uh, <laughs> you aren't allowed to have different opinions than us. I it, like or I don't like. Yeah. It's a zero or a one, Travis. <laughs> Fuck off. Binary. <laughs> Binary. But, yes, uh, I thought, wow, uh, I was surprised how much I connected with this main character whose main conflict is that he's at his, uh, uh, pa- Girl- his <laughs> girlfriend's parents' house and he's kind of dealing with some weird racism, uh, especially at this big party. And it gets a little more, it seems to be getting a little more sinister as the, as the, his time there goes on. And it's basically kind of the, the premise of the story. And I was like, man, I, even though being the whitest of white people, I can actually really relate with this guy of, I have what he's going through right now, which is surprising because I've never, I never have this experience of just, uh, going into, to a party and just kind of being worried about, you know, these people treating me really differently and just acting super weird around me. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, man, this must be like a regular thing. Uh, if, uh, you know, being a minority, like just like, uh, us white people were weird like that. Apparently, uh, we are weird. Yeah. I can't really relate, but I can understand having some experience in that field. Almost as if we could empathize with characters we don't directly relate to. Yeah. Seemed like a bunch of other people did too, because the third, I think, is a a bunch of, how much money it made. Uh, (laughs) yeah, those aren't all minorities. Man, that can't, I actually watched it a second time with Kyle. I went to go see it a second time, and, uh, seeing it a second time to see all the stuff that got set up and the, the way they tell the, their story and their narrative and how the meta, like this, the metaphor of, uh, appropriating kind of, uh, uh, this kind of white fear and appropriating black culture, mm-hmm. how that all plays out is like, wow, it's super fucking engaging to actually watch, uh, uh, watch on screen. I'm interested in Peel's next movie. Yeah. I am. Uh, I'm really shocked that this is his first horror film. It's his I'm, first film, isn't it? I think it's directing. Well, well, yeah, first directing film, yeah. Because uh, uh, you're right, he didn't direct Keanu. He only he wrote it. He wrote Keanu with uh, with his buddy, uh, uh, Keegan Key, 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 Key Michael Key, I think. And uh, yeah, so as a first time first time uh, directing job, wow, what a what a great job! Like the tension is real. Mm-hmm. I've never seen humor really drive up tension the way it does here where it's like these just this funny little moments but they're it's so awkward funny yeah. like like oh man this is so weird it's softcore racism uh yeah <laughs> uh but oh man uh, just the line is like he's not racist he would have voted for obama, obama for, a for a third, third term, term. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, I think uh, from, uh, from now on, I'm just gonna say that anytime I meet a minority, I would have voted for Obama oh, third, third time. Just no, that's, that's super that's racist. Super racist. <laughs> super racist. And then like, uh, like, oh, you professionally golf? Yes. Oh, and I know Tiger. Weird that you would mention that. Not all black people know all other <laughs> black people. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you know plenty of other white people that you didn't bother to mention to me that you knew, but fine. <laughs> I hear Mickelson's a great golfer. Uh, <laughs> I, I love it because it's like, you can tell he's dealt with this his whole life because it's just like, uh, it's like that. I'm going at this again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh. It's like, uh, oh, he has, like, women fawning over him like a piece of meat. <laughs> like, just like, ooh. I'm like, so tell me, is it better? <laughs> oh, wow. Given. Damn. Given. Mm-hmm. I will give it to uh that one dude who said the tiger line. You might want to brag that you did see, or you do know, the best golfer in the yeah. world. Yeah, That's yeah. actually what I brought up to Nick, where I'm like, well, he is kind of, you know, the most famous sure. golfer. I mean, a lot of the racism is like that, where it's kind of like... Yeah, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> it's like... Uh... Uh, it's kind of like <laughs> I want to attack you, but I don't know if you're just stupid. <laughs> but yeah, it's so great how that all pays off at the end too. Like you could tell, like 
you are you're, you are probably being racist, but it's not worth my time to try and correct you on it. So I'm just gonna let this go. <laughs> uh, I just loved all the acting in this movie, like at, even the minor characters. Well, the, the guy, the main guy, I don't have his name up here. You'll have to forgive me, but his face, his face, so many facial expressions. His, it, look at him. Look at the because uh, he meets you know the other Daniel Kalua. I'm just gonna say that. He, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. We're white. That's our thing. That's our excuse for everything. He, yep. he has he has the greatest what the fuck face ever. Mm-hmm. Like he's just like, uh, yeah, because he meets the, you know the other black people of the community, and it's like, why are all these uh, why are all these guys around here acting like Dave Chappelle's impression of a white person? <laughs> like, like why are they all doing well, that? Uh, you see, <laughs> yes. Like that big, the big black guy that's doing work around the house. They they come up to him and he's kind of like got the intimidating kind of glower. Then he puts on this goofy smile. It's just like, oh, you're dating uh, the 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 Rose. There is she a dawn gone keep uh, dog gone keeper? I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> like, do they transport you from the 60s or 50s or something? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> why are you some like? Yeah, but it it was a very. uh interesting film that I I can't I would love to tell you why it's so brilliant but I can't do it without major spoilers I've been telling all my co-workers like to go see this movie and they're like why I'm like I it's gah. you just gotta you just go gotta see go see it but uh, I will yeah. spoil one thing yep there is no skeleton deer there is no skeleton deer I, I was I, looking for it I, like, in the trailer it shows a skeleton deer and I'm, I, the whole movie I'm like where is this skeleton deer coming in because we see the deer die in the beginning of the film like he gets, they hit a, hit a deer on the drive up then we see a mounted deer every once in a while yep. like where is this skeleton deer and it never shows up yep. I was just like what the hell I, it might have been just a I have no idea well, why would you well, we'll, we'll let, with that yeah we'll let people talk about that once they've seen the movie yeah I honestly didn't even remember that until Nick brought it up after we saw the movie I'm like yeah. oh yeah I don't know it just really stuck out to me in the trailer because mm-hmm. it was the weirdest moment in the trailer uh, but yeah if I had to give it a rating I'm I was struggling because I was like I, I was literally trying to think about like there's not a lot I don't like about it there's only a couple things like there's a couple sound design things uh, that I feel are a little weird. Like, there's a moment at near the end where there's some chanting going on during a final, like, a, a face-off sequence between two characters. Mm. And I didn't understand why it was there. Uh, and then there was an, a weird piano thing that happened in the in the second act. But, like, the, the, it's like the smallest of nitpicks <laughs> uh, uh, going through that film. So I, I'd actually have to give it a, a, a 5 out of 5. Is uh, it like your, what, second or third film this February that you're giving a 5 out of 5? This February, I'm going to... Our next episode might have to be best February ever because I'm gonna I'm gonna look up the what previous Februarys and try and figure out if this is the best February I've ever had for movies because it's ridiculous how many good sh- how much good shit came. We're out. just gonna do best Februarys of all time. Best Februarys of all time. Rank your rank your Februarys. <laughs> Uh, Kyle, I, I'm gonna let you finish, but two, 2017 had the best February of all time <laughs> of all time. Uh, but yeah, because it was this. Uh, what else? Wait, what else? Did we, what did we see uh, uh, in February? John Wick, John Wick two, Lego, Lego Batman. Batman. Uh, it was a couple. Of, uh, was it was split more? in Sp- no split no, was earlier. That might have been January. I think that was January. Late, yeah. January. But yeah, wow, some great, great fucking movies. Uh, with that, uh, we have uh a couple other uh announcements. Are we not giving ratings for Kyle now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I totally, I totally forgot to get to you. I was I getting into February thing. today, Kyle. Yep. Uh, no, I'm just super forgetful. You forgive me. What would you guys give it? Uh, I honestly, I'd probably to give this movie a nine out of ten. I thoroughly Woo! enjoyed it. It was, it did something just kind of you don't see in movies, and it is just, it's so fucking good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ditto. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Wow. wow. Two for two today, where Kyle and I are agreeing on the same score. Well, uh, well, I guess I would have seen that because our Netflix and kills come out. They come out yeah, the earlier. So. Yep, yep. They were they were seen about already. But uh, yeah, it's 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 a movie that manages to be entertaining in in the ways all the ways a movie should be, but yet shows you com- something you've never seen before. Right. And let's uh, point this out: I hate horror movies. Like I just don't like watching them for many different reasons. And I love this movie. Yeah, it's I I, I can't highly recommend it enough. Go, go see cause, Get Out. Well, partially because they put effort into it. Uh, wow. g- get out and see Get Out. Uh, uh, that's what I would, I would put it as. Well, now we have to punish you. Yeah, <laughs> well, punish me. Yes. <laughs> it's, 
Yeah. Uh, just call me the pun Uh But yeah, the... Uh, that, that just makes it sound like it's kind of a pun. Like, it's kind of a play on words, but not really. Well, the, yeah. he's the pun isher because he's fishing for puns. <laughs> oh, the pun fisher. I pun get fisher. it. Pun uh, fisher. But, yeah, the the studio of Blumhouse Productions behind this, they're a pretty, pretty smart studio as well. Uh, Jason Blum, I think the head of the studio, is he puts, off, puts out a lot of, like, crap, basically. Like, mm-hmm. like, he puts out a lot of... Not very well, like not very highly seen movies, and uh, not very highly rated movies. So that he not can, very high budget movies. So though. that he, so that he can, so that he can use the profits to fund stuff like Whiplash, that was yes. a Blumhouse production, yep. and this movie, like Get Out, and uh, the Conjuring films are also the, the are theirs. The Insidious films are theirs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Lights Lights Out, the the last yep. that movie that was theirs. They, it's a very ambitious production company that's willing to do, to try and do different crazy I'm gonna, things. I'm gonna check that last one, but. I think Lights Out was them. Maybe I'm wrong. Not 100% sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, uh, in other news, we have, uh. The visit was theirs, apparently. Oh yeah, that was theirs too. Giving M. Night, M. Night a, a chance again. Uh, yeah, Marvel. Uh, in other news, Marvel's Avengers, they're going to get another animated series. Like, what, their third or fourth one? Uh, no, this one's going to be anime. anime. Oh, anime. Uh, anime series, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's it's a form of animation, so it's also an animated series. Uh, they, it, off of, uh, it's not their first one, though. They've had other stuff like Marvel Disc Wars, uh, and uh, a couple of the other, like, they had an Iron Man anime series and a Wolverine uh, uh, series. Uh... There's not a much. There's not much uh, word on it yet, like what the story is going to be. All all it is is this really weird picture of like Frank and Hulk. Uh, everyone else looks about right, but Hulk looks fucking weird to me for whatever reason. No, that's like '90s anime. Hulk, Hulk looks scary to me. I don't know what's wrong with him. He, he looks like a drill sergeant. He's just like yeah. just like if Arlie Ermy got induced with a bunch of gamma radiation. <laughs> Where? Where are you from? Where are you from, boy? Like, he's tra- training the recruits for the Avengers. Yep. Where are you from, boy? I'm from New York, like all the other Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> Only one thing come from New York. Steers and queers. Ah! <laughs> this is the drill, sar- uh, drill sergeant from Full Metal Jacket. Uh, but American Horror Story, we were talking a little bit about uh, the their new season that uh, they were, it was going to be off the 2016 elections. Mm. Apparently there's going to be no Trump or Clinton for season seven. Okay. So it's a, well, just a parody of it. Hold on. They, they said that it, uh, American Horror Story has always been an allegory. So Trump, like actual Trump and Clinton, like those characters will not show up. So what that, what I think that means is that, oh, so they're going to completely, they're going to, change the character's name, but they're going to be allegories for those characters. So they're going to have a Trump-like guy and, you know, a Clinton-type candidate as well. And they're going to... Baldwin? Yeah, and, and, they'll, and, and they'll, they just won't call... They won't be called Trump, but they'll, he, he'll be in everything... Uh, they'll, All they'll, but name. They'll be in Trump, but everything but name. So maybe they'll call him Trump. <laughs> Go back to his original family name. Lord Dampnut. Uh, uh, by the way, Lights Out does not appear to be a Blumhouse production. Oh, okay. So I got that wrong. My bad. Uh, yeah. So that was basically all I had for uh for news this week. A little little lighter on on news. Uh, but yeah, the, we are in a exciting time because February is super uh, super fun. March seems to be pretty cool because we got me and Travis excited for Andromeda. Yeah, Iron Fist is gonna drop. Logan's soon. coming out right Lo- now. Logan is as we are recording. Uh, we are planning on going to see it tonight. Although we could uh, mention, unfortunately, that um. Mass Effect Andromeda had given like a little hint that saying that they might be releasing an open beta for their multiplayer early. Mm-hmm. And, like you could actually, if you pre-order, you get into this open beta. Well, that's nope. been canceled. No, nope. uh, I'm like, well, yeah, fuck you. Fuck. Uh, but anyway, uh, should we take a small musical break and get uh, come back with uh, some trailer talk? Sure, sure. I don't know why you're not there. I give you my love, but you don't care. So what is right? What is wrong? Just give me a sign. What is And 
and welcome back to the UGO podcast. And we are here to talk about some trailers, some big ass trailers we got to talk about. Uh, man, what should we start with? There's so there's so many there's so many things. Uh, you know what? Let's start off with the monsters. Monster match. Yeah, we got some. We got uh, we got a couple monsters to talk about today. How about we start with Alien Covenant, second trailer for the Alien Co- Alien Alien film. Uh, Ridley Scott trying to redeem himself after the not Prometheus for, for, two movie, it, it, right? Well, it is. well, trying to redeem the Alien franchise because Martian yes. was good. Yeah, because the Martian was good. This crew is made up of couples. It's the first ever large scale colonization mission, and everyone back on Earth is. So really it's like great passengers without the sexism. Your hard work. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, you don't know that. And your courage. We're making history here. This is wheat. What are the odds of finding human vegetation this far from Earth? Who planted it? Pretty long. One would say impossible. You hear that? What? Nothing. No birds. That's not... That's kind of terrifying. No animals. Nothing. And where's the nearest next planet? Because I'd go there. Aliens and the penis ships. What happened here? I would dare you to make a rocket that doesn't look like a penis. <laughs> I know. I think it's some sort of thing. I think it's just penises fly better now. Penises do fly better. But the monsters of a giant, that's nice. <laughs> Bouncing them. What's happening? All of this to start our new life. Where is it? That was the trailer for Alien Covenant. Uh, I'm not. I'm not 100 sure. Like, I like this trailer ble- le- better than the last one. Yeah, I think the alien looked pretty cool. Yeah, yeah the alien looks good. Yeah. Uh, we see a couple snippets of some other alien-like things, but they they're probably not the traditional alien. So there might be some sort of kind of battle for supremacy versus the victims here. Mm-hmm. Is uh, this also still in prequel territory? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, as far as I know, I think the timeline is still before the original Alien movie actually takes place. Mm. Uh, they are colonizers. This is like in in Alien, uh, Earth colonies are are a, a big thing already. Yeah, like they do that, and they're like it's about a bunch of Earth like, shippers, uh, like a. Uh, not like not relationships. It's like it's like <laughs> ice road truckers, except yes. for in space. <laughs> yes, that's very exactly what that is. Which is why I like that film as much as I do. Space uh, road truckers. This is much more scientists doing the first colonizing things. So we're advancing the timeline a little bit, but it's still before the uh, traditional alien franchise uh, happens. So uh, I like that. I like the action shots. That looks neat. The, everything has got the cool alien look to it. Uh, like uh, uh, Ridley Scott knows how to design a set, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. My main concern is that it's just not it doesn't seem that much different than say the first Alien. Like, yeah. Uh, a lot of the scenes are kind of ripped right, like it seemed to be ripped right from it. Um, yeah, I just I I don't know if like because. Obviously, the Prometheus was an interesting, uh, interesting idea. I just wish they would have done it better. And this one is kind of like, oh, so we're back to the alien, and hopefully, whatever the alien is also fighting on that on that Earth, like the the other uh, parasitic monsters, will add a little more uh, flavor to it as well. But 
ultimately, I'm not I'm not sure if it's going to turn out to, to be very different mm-hmm. than because uh, you, you say what you want. The Alien franchises one through four they're very different from each other. Alien one is the traditional horror film. Aliens Aliens two is the uh, Aliens is the action film. Alien three is like the depressing back to basics uh uh like nihilist film. Yep. Uh Alien Alien Resurrection is the kind of goofy campy Jason X version of <laughs> of the Alien franchise. There there are different reasons to watch all of those movies. Uh on the bright side for Prometheus, it came up with a recurring joke in Cinema Sins. So, <laughs> mm. uh, the Prometheus school of running away from things. Yes, uh, run to the side, bitch. Uh, <laughs> but the, I'm not sure, babe. It's not like anything was specifically bad in this film. I'm just, I'm just wondering, like, what is the point it's of this? A little too generic. What's the you're, point you're, of this prequel? Yeah, you're, uh, you're, you're going about it cautiously. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I you, you've been hurt by this franchise before. We understand. Oh, I've been super hurt before. Prometheus, I I had high hopes for Prometheus, and I came out of that kind of like a little butt hurt about it. I was just like, man, uh, you did me a little wrong, Prometheus. I need I need really really Scott. You made you made it up to me a little bit with the Martian. I mean, you 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 showed me that you can be good, but I, before we get back into this relationship, I need you to show some real change. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you guys are your, your your feelings on it? Well, the only thing I really saw interesting about it in a real way, other than the other movies, was that oh, they're all couples. I'm like, well, that actually adds a little bit of tension to the movie. Sure. Um, would it probably is going to cause some interesting scenes? Of I'm people... calling a love triangle right now. Yeah, I'm calling a love triangle Nick. right now. Nick. No, 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 no. I'm trying to get interested in this movie. <laughs> Nick, Nick, you're thinking too small. <laughs> or love Pentagon. Love hectagon. Hectagon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're really? fine. A, a hexagon's fine. A hexa- I was gonna go pentagon because okay. then we'd have like the intrigue of like one person's not in the exactly in on this. Like they're mm-hmm. cheating on them, but whereas the other four are, like just swingers. It's like yeah. yeah. I think this is a good way to go. I'm preparing you for super fights, not super fights for uh, anime <laughs> pitch, pitch. By yeah. the way, um, and one of them turns out we uh, one of them turns out alien fucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really into that second mouth. Yep, yeah, we we're training you to make bad decisions right Nick, now. Nick. That kind of language is xenophobic. <laughs> that, that, yeah. ah, ah, get ah. it? This is a xenomorph. It's a pun. Uh, it means two things. I like language. <laughs> oh, eat shit and die. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, let, should we move on to an, our our a second monster film? Sure. Yes. Uh, how about Kong Skull, uh, Skull Island? All right. Let's see, see give that a, a watch here. Let's see what Kong's been up to. An uncharted island. Let me list all the ways you're going to die. Rain, heat, disease-carrying flies. And we haven't started on the things that want to eat your life. We'll double that. Plus a bonus if we make it back. If? In this dirty old part of the city Where the sun refused to shine Is that a monkey? <laughs> oh my god! He's been working so hard! Get the hell out of here! I love the prizes on the inside. That's Kong. He's God on the island. We don't belong here. But the devils live below us. I call them skull crawlers. Why? Because it sounds neat. Okay. Look, I just made that name up. I'm trying to scare you. I'm fine calling them that. Are you cool with that? Yeah, that that seems like a good idea. I like the name. So now they're advertising as a straight-up comedy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like that. Yeah, that was neat.
It's time to up, just motherfucker. Alright. Alright. I want to see this movie now. Man. Okay. <laughs> that, okay. I, I know during our Die Show Con episode, our live show, that uh, <laughs> we gave you shit for this, but. That looks Where pre- was this? That yeah. looked pretty rad, right? You yeah. gotta admit, that was a fucking rad trailer. There, there were some cool things, like the um, gearing up shot the mm-hmm. t- 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 yeah. t- to the mu- to the music. Yeah. Uh, that was good. Yeah, it reminds me of Suicide Squad a little bit. Uh, uh, okay, like, maybe I won't don't want to see this yeah, movie. Yeah. <laughs> of like, at least that trailer of how it timed the music yes. to, the, to the action. Yep. You gotta admit, the Suicide Squad had good trailers. Yep. Uh, yeah, and it, Suicide Squad wasn't the worst DC film I see, saw yeah, recently. True. So, and the the thing with this is like, if you were worried this was going to be boring and that they weren't going to show the monsters in it, holy shit, yeah, <laughs> they show a lot of monster fighting in that's this. That's a lot of monsters. He fights raptor things. He fights skull crawlers. He fights helicopters and an octopus. And he fights an octopus. Uh, and then the humans are fighting all those things. And too. whenever Will Ferrell's Brother is there, you know that it's... <laughs> From Step Brothers. You know that it's going to be a comedy anyway, so... His name is John C. Riley. We're never going to remember that. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, but you, you, you're you right, uh, he's from the movie Step Brothers. Uh, I I like the to- like the comedy in this is fun, too. Uh, I can't wait for Sam Jackson to yell at some monsters. Mm. <laughs> uh, John Goodman, like, the acting is there. And of course, my favorite is the guy. The is that a monkey guy? He still cracks me up every time he says it. Mm-hmm. Is that a monkey? Is that a monkey? Is that a monkey? It's <laughs> just uh and it's like Hank Hill. <laughs> and Kong is a badass. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god! When he pulls out that tree, it's like, all right, that's awesome. I'm a, I'm gonna cut down on wind resistance on this. I don't want that to <laughs> fuck up, fuck up my swing. Like he's like he almost hey, kicks Kong. He almost, <laughs> <laughs> he almost kicks the kicks the bat on his on his shoe to get ready for the yeah. line. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna fuck him. Give her just some dirt on batting his average, okay? <laughs> He's very aware of his batting average. <laughs> yeah, he cracks that motherfucker across the face. Uh, yeah, I, man. Uh, now that I know that they went straight up comedy, at least that's how they're selling it now. Yes. They're yeah. selling it as they went, were going for a straight up comedy. Yeah. Oh man, if they play it serious in the movie, that will so not work. I'll be, yeah, so, no. I'll be so disappointed. Be I'll be boring. so disappointed. Yeah. Uh, they, they see. I see like them using gas masks with like gas uh, and killing monsters with like machetes in the like using v- Vietnam era weapons, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm I'm jazzed to see this. Yep. Holy crap. Yep. Uh, and this Kong is supposed to fight uh, Godzilla at some point, I think. Oh, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna combine these two together at some point and have them versus. See, yeah, well, but then they actually the... had to show Godzilla. Yeah, well, I guess that they're gonna because uh, I think that one of the direct- the director was quoted here as saying, like, you know, the thing I like about monster movies is that when you get to I want to do it against first form Shin Godzilla, and I know you didn't, guys didn't see that, I've but seen I showed, it. but I, I saw it. I I saw it online. The clip, uh, like, yeah, the, the little uh, tadpole, yeah, the yeah. little derpy uh, Godzilla, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You showed us that. Yeah, uh, he's so funny looking. I, I I want him to go against that Godzilla. <laughs> he'd just be like, really? Come on. It probably squeaks. Yeah. uh... Color me fucking excited. I, I, I'm, I'm on board. Uh, 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 give me more. Uh, but let's see if we're, uh, there's some other, there's some other things we might not be too on board with. Uh, are we on board with the new Pirates movie? Nah. Uh, I see the pun there. Cause we had a... I like your pun work. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I thought, it, I thought it was clever. Today. We, uh, we have another trailer. Uh, and this one's a little bit different. It gives us a little more context into, uh, yeah, I think, I think the first one that we saw, the teaser trailer, we were like, eh, not enough. The second yeah. one, we were like, this is oddly kind of intriguing almost. Yeah, a lot of it, but, but it didn't have Johnny Depp in it almost at yeah. all. This one actually Which features, not a bad thing. this one features Johnny Depp and it shows his role in the film. So let's see, let's see if that changes our opinion yet again. Alright, fuck you from the beginning. Iris Slow down fucking song. for generations. So I vowed to eliminate them all. And then, there was this boy. Jack Sparrow. Follow him! That looked weird. It's like it was a CG he character. He took everything from me. They de-aged Johnny Depp, I think. And filled me with... Rage. I once knew a Spaniard named something in Spanish. 
He's coming for you, Jack. Where's your ship? Your crew? Your pants? Jack! I'm so sorry, were you still talking? There's nowhere to hide. Find Sparrow for me. That effect looks really weird and bright. On, we are to be yeah. allies. Considering where your left hand is, I'd say we're more than that. Uh-huh. Oh, shit, zombie shark. Oh, monkey. I'm not looking for trouble. What a horrible way to live. You were paying for what you did to me. I'm looking for Jack. I'm going to swim for it. Karina, stop that. No, 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 no. Don't stop that. This has gone far enough. No, it has not. I saw her ankles. You'd have seen a lot more if you kept your cake holes shut. Oh, man, I saw her ankles. That's like second base in Christian baseball. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was the uh, second, or no, the third trailer for uh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. And we get a little more context for uh, why Javier Bardem is chasing Jack. Apparently Jack fucked him over hard, and uh, he's out look- looking for some vengeance. Mm-hmm. Uh, odd that he waited so long for his vengeance, but uh, maybe he was busy uh, floating at the bottom of the sea because he can't even, like, he's because he's barely half of a person. Uh Kyle was mentioning, like, like that affected, it's a, it's a little bit weird in the in the uh, Yeah, they have it day. a lot. Uh <laughs> Well, I think there was a reason that they had, you know, the skeletons only appeared at night in the first film. Like, there was mm-hmm. a, to hide a little bit of the seams there. Uh, I don't know. I think there... I like the story of this. I like the fact that the villain has a legitimate grievance against Jack. And is just mm-hmm. like, nah, fuck this guy. I, I'm out to get him. And he has a cool design for his for his guys. His ship has this neat kind of... Like, it opens up like this crustacean uh, crab thing. Uh, I like Jeffrey Rush. He's always one. Of, he's always my favorite part of all these movies. Uh, the the worst thing about it is probably going to be the heroes because we bring back the replacements for uh uh what's what's his name Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the new guy they have for it, and those guys are boring from what I remember in the fifth film, and uh, or the fourth one, whichever one it is. Yeah, it's the fourth one. Uh, uh the don't worry, they'll probably be boring yeah. the fifth one too. The so I I'm not I'm not super jazzed about that. Uh we see Jack back uh, we see Jack back and to be to be fair, he's not very he's not completely very annoying. because uh, we only see him in, in small doses here. But he's he, also not interesting. Yeah, well I d I'm not sure that they've quite gotten it down because we, we all forget that Jack wasn't the, wasn't the main character in the first movie. Right. Like, mm-hmm. he was not the main character. Yep. Uh, he was this plucky side character that everyone fell in love with. And they've always, and they've ever since then tried to focus the movies on him. And that has been a mistake. Because he was always the comic relief, but you don't, you don't make a movie about comic reliefs. Yeah, so, that, I think that they've, they've backed themselves into a corner on that because it, how do you, you can't make Jack the secondary character, secondary character of the film like, like uh, after this, after so long of him being the main. Mm-hmm. So they've kind of backed themselves into a corner on that. Uh, but overall, I would say like, hey, maybe we can get so, a little bit of swashbuckling fun out of it. I know I would appreciate it because I, I, I like pirate films, and I feel like we, if you're not a Pirates of the Caribbean movie, no one wants to dip their toe in the in the water for it, mm-hmm. and. So it's either it's basically either this or nothing when it comes to pirate films. Mm, I uh, might go with the nothing. Yeah, uh, not impressed by this trailer, Travis. Dead men sell no tickets. <laughs> oh no! I there was no part of this movie where I was even really remotely even interested in this trailer. It bored me to tears. <laughs> uh, even the scene of the pirate ship was cool. We saw that kind of the last trailer. Mm-hmm. I don't like Johnny Depp. Uh, I haven't, I've only seen the second movie and I've never felt any interest in seeing any of the other ones. You didn't see the first movie? Well, I saw up to the second movie. Oh, up movie. to, okay. Oh, he never. Everyone saw the first movie. <laughs> yeah, no, he never saw three or anything beyond. Yeah. Um, and, I don't know. I, this trailer did nothing for me. Yeah, it left me pretty tepid too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, Kyle, you feeling the same? You feeling? Yeah, yeah, about. 
Uh, I don't know. Like maybe <laughs> if it, tight. Thank you. Maybe if it, if it, this franchise did die, maybe some other someone else would try and pick up the mantle mm. of, of a pirate, a nice swashbuckling pirate film. But I kind of doubt it. I think this is like the la- like we most film genres we see cycles. They come and go in cycles. Right. Pirate films have never really come back, and the only one, the only exception it ha- has been this franchise. So I think once this one goes away, I think it's just going to be gone for quite a bit. Until... Kind of like cowboy movies. Yeah. Well, uh, well, we get westerns, but now we get more serious type westerns. Like the last cowboy movie western was Magnificent Seven, and that mm-hmm. fucked up Royal. So uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I would say that maybe uh, maybe it'll be good. Like I, I might. I might go see it if there's enough good word of mouth, but other than that, I think I'm going to skip it. Uh, something I probably won't skip is the new DuckTales trailer, uh, new DuckTales TV show that we also have the trailer for. You guys want to watch that? Yes. With David Tennant as Scrooge McDuck. Destination, McDuck Manor. McDuck Manor? As in Scrooge McDuck? The bajillionaire? You're finally going to sell us. Really? Really? <laughs> really? Make Scrooge McDuck. Are you really our uncle? How old are you? You used to be a big deal. Whatever happened to you? <laughs> used to be a big deal. I'm Scrooge I ghost. Yeah. I made my name being tough on the toughies <laughs> the and smart on the Carol. smarties. Sure, you want to do it the easy way. Oh my gosh, the nephews! What are your blood types? What's Donald really like? Who's the evil triplet? Louie. <laughs> We're just a normal, boring family. Normal? Boring? <laughs> Donald Duck is one of the when does when? Oh no. Is this Kingdom Hearts? Hearts? Yeah, yeah is this Kingdom Hearts? Kingdom Hearts? Kingdom Hearts? Business. I can handle a few juveniles for the weekend. Yeah. Besides, we've got a pretty low-key day planned. The danger! Yeah, I like the 90s DuckTales song better. And that just might be me, but... New discoveries! You guys, our family is awesome! Aw, oh, family truly is the greatest adventure of all known the ground! God damn it, Log Pad! Do your fucking job! One job. I don't know, I like the dialogue, though. I do like the, the dialogue. I like the fact that, like, if, oh, you're taking us to see our rich uncle? Are you finally selling us? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> like, oh, wow, a child slavery joke. That's nice. Yeah. That's interesting. Like, I never who's seen that. the evil triplet, Dewey? Or Louie? Yeah. yeah it's, like, it's like, eh. Yeah, mm-hmm. probably. <laughs> That's fair. That's how I react. A fair, to. A fair, a fair assessment. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, that was weird. It's like, so Donald apparently is this, uh, adventurer? I guess. Uh, I don't think he, was he ever established as an adventurer in the original series? I don't remember him being. Oh, uh, well, he, off, he had a lot of adventures with Mickey Mouse and a lot of different things, but... Sure, I never know what those are canon, though. Yeah, I know, Because right? it's like, well, then he, he would technally be a musketeer, right. a, 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 a brush salesman, uh... Uh, the devil, uh, yeah. he would have worked for the Nazis. Like, oh, yeah. like there was that thing. Like, if all that's canon, then yeah, I guess he's the one of the the most prolific uh, p- people in the world. He has he's had as many jobs as fucking Homer Simpson has. Also, about ninety, <laughs> like, <laughs> or no, or Peter Griffin. Uh, but yeah, I really like uh, David Tennant's turn as Scrooge McDuck. Uh, he sounds he sounds uh, about right to me. Like mm. uh, like uh, what I want Scrooge to sound Just like. Just still seems weird. Like. Uh, I don't know, like, I think it's his natural Scottish thing. He just puts a little yeah. more emphasis on like, no, no. sounding a little older. It's just the fact that it's David Tennant playing an animated voice. Like, it just seems weird. I don't know. I think it's perfect. I think David mm. Tennant just looks like an animated character in real life That's anyway. Fair. Like, he, I think it's I think it's perfectly natural that he plays an animated character. Uh, that hair. Man, that hair. <laughs> he, he's like mid... He's mid-transforming into Super Saiyan all the time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh... I, I'd say I'm really excited. I think the humor's there. Uh, the animation looks pretty dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I'm very excited, uh, and I'm not even a big fan of the of the original one. Uh, like Kyle was saying, though, hopefully they switch up that theme song so that we can, the original one was awesome. Like maybe not even change the theme song at all because man, is that original one? Uh, uh, it, it's it's real good. It's mm-hmm. real good. Real catchy. 
Uh, but we have one more trailer to get to before we uh, we end the trailer talk. And I say the best for last Did you because know? now we've got to watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume t- Volume Two. I see it within. Gold me. diamond. Fear. Oh. Jealousy. Betrayal. It is our duty to cleanse the universe of this weakness. You know, they told me you people were conceited douchebags, but that isn't true at all. Dude. Uh, I'm using my wrong eye. Through, put your seatbelt on. (laughs) So we're saving the galaxy again? Yep. Awesome. We're really going to be able to jack up our price if we're two-time Galaxy Savers. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Right. What the fuck? Screw the spaceship. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh, nope, now it comes up. Sometimes, the thing you're searching for your whole life, it's right there by your side all along. You're right. <laughs> all you do is yell at each other. You are not friends. No, we're family. Except maybe her. <laughs> After all these years, I've found you. And who the hell are you? Daddy. I'm your dad, Peter. All right, so that's the third and final trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy. They, uh, they, they've they made the announcement that there will be no trailers until the final film comes out. All right. And for me, I'm like, good. Yeah. No more. I, 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 there's no way... I could want to wa- want to watch this film more than I than I have. If I if you make me want to watch this film more than I do right now, I will come to your house and murder you and take the tape because <laughs> I want to watch this so fucking bad. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know about you guys, but this trailer is just like, how are they keep showing me new things, new things in the trailer, and yet it feels like we like. That that monster thing, that tentacle thing, I bet you that's the opening of the movie. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. the opening action sequence. And then the rest of it is like, I don't even know what happens well, in the we rest have, of we it. we have got some uh, information where it looks like we did see a scene where Nebula is attacking Gamora. So yeah. that explains okay. that part. So she What cares? about Gamora with a giant spaceship cannon over her that's shoulder? She has, yeah, so she d- she's got to have super strength because that is like, that is a... Three of her, like that's like that's, that's more than three of her, man. That's uh, that's unbelievably a size like it's that's like three of Drax. That's not that's the uh, the Rhino from Ratchet and Clank or the whatever it's the I would I dubbed the the overcompensator. It's the, <laughs> it's the BFG the, dude. The, 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 the yes, I uh, it's uh, it's frankly it's ridiculous. Like who would need a gun that big? Uh, uh, the Guardians, man. It's the Guardians. Maybe, she, maybe she's using one of Thanos' guns, like a daddy's hand-me-down. Like, it's just, and it's just too big for her. Oh. Uh, but yeah. Um, is it too late for me to invest in pop vinyl figures? Uh, because Baby Groot is gonna sell, like, you wouldn't even He seems believe. like he's only in the movie just to be like, oh, isn't that fucking adorable? Well, there's that one point where it's like, I sense fear in you, and you see, like, little Groot with his, with his lip quiver, and I was just like, oh no. <laughs> It's gonna be alright, baby Groot. We used to see where Gamora's like killing people and then just like, hi, and just like waves to baby Groot. Well, and it's like, okay, so Nebula comes down and tries to kill Gamora and then somehow she kind of ends up on the team at some point. She trips over something, ends up on the team. And then Yondu looks like the same thing happens because Yondu, Yondu like surrounds Rocket and he's got, Michael Rooker has got that great smile because he smiles and you go like, Oh, shit's about to not go my way, is yeah. it? Like, he's got that great smile of like, I'm about to fuck you over. Uh, man, uh, I, I love it. Drax, of course, is always on point with his humor. Like, uh, standing right next to Quill, yes. like, scaring the shit out of him. Uh, you know, he's got the family line. Apparently, we even are cha- changing this into Fast and the Furious. 
any maybe it's Take just, a shot. Maybe just any uh, maybe just any uh, Vin Diesel any movie Vin Diesel's in, he starts to bleed in that catchphrase <laughs> in there. You know, take a shot every time they say family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I, I I can't even I can't even express how excited I am. I, I love it. I love every every minute of it. Uh, I think it's it's uh, if it's going the way I think it is, it might even top the original for me. So mm. I, and I. And I love the first Guardians of the Galaxy, so that's uh, some high praise uh, for me. Some some expectations. I know I shouldn't get my expectations up this high, but it, it's hard with when it gives me such great trailers like this. Uh, whoever the marketing team is behind these trailers, man, you should give them. You're that, pretty like, damn good, man. Yeah, you give those guys some. Uh, give those guys a raise because uh, you've guaranteed them uh, at least uh, twenty bucks from me. Because I don't think there's any way I'm not going to see this twice in the <laughs> theater. Uh, yeah, but you, you guys feeling the same way? You got, yes. Yeah. Any any reservations like at all at this point? <laughs> no. Because I uh, I kind of like that. I don't even know what the like the main storyline after that first action sequence is. Uh, but yeah, uh, with that, I think uh, that's that's basically all all the trailers I had for today. And uh, with that, I think we can uh, wrap up our trailer talk and go into our interview with the We Are Air crew, where we're going to talk about a little bit about gaming controversies and a little bit about gaming culture in general. Uh, but we'll be back right with that right after this musical. Uh, break. Quickly, I do not know oh. if Funko, who makes the pop vinyl figures, is publicly traded. I can't find their stock prices. Oh, that's what Kyle was doing. Like, <laughs> oh, Kyle, was. Was, Kyle was like looking up. Like he was probably like, "Oh, that's a pretty good idea." <laughs> <laughs> Just like. You know, like just excuse me for just a minute. <laughs> uh, well, that's that's good to know. Uh, uh, let, let me know if you, if you find anything, because because I'll invest. I swear to God. Uh, but anyway, yes, uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back with our regular schedule programming right after this. Uh, right after this musical break. Hope you enjoy. Welcome back to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Podcast, another crossover edition, because we got the We Are Error guys back, Chris and John. Chris and John, say hi to the people. Hello, everyone. I am Chris. Hey, people. I'm John. Great. Now sound like human beings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want I love not, not, to, not to interrupt you, Nick, but I, I have to say, when you opened up with the Yu-Gi-Oh! Podcast, I thought you said the Yu-Gi-Oh! Podcast. I'm thinking, oh my it god, ha- we're going to start dueling now. It happens all the time. Uh, Chris, you didn't know. It's time to d d d d duel Duel. Uh, I did like how we opened up, like, hi, hi, kids, I'm Chris. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you reminded me of, like, you, I'm flashing back to my Chuck E. Cheese nightmare <laughs> thing when one of the anat- animatronics went haywire. Oh, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, nice reference yeah. right there. <laughs> Let me show you to my van. <laughs> it comes with free I love, candy. I love that I can show, like, 12-year-olds Five Nights at Freddy's and they have no idea what it is. Like, they have no idea. It's like, <laughs> like, I've never been to Chuck E. Cheese. Like, well, you have yeah. horrible parents. Uh, or maybe no, you have no, you have, you have great parents. Yeah. Actually, they have good parents. They actually <laughs> yeah. spend quality time with them and don't dump them off at a uh, second-rate babysitting service. Yeah. But anyway, yes, uh, Chris and John here run the We Are Error podcast over at oneofus.net. Uh, would you like to tell the people uh, what the We Are Error is? John, why don't you go for it? Oh, We Are Air is a one of us dot net's premier video game podcast. I just love to say that the way you Chris say, does. I said that dot dot, dot. You got to come with that staccato. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we're just two guys over uh, in Austin who talk video games. Uh, usually just uh, news, reviews, and a general main topic with each main episode. And we just started our newest series, Retro Reviews, where we talk about classic video games. Ah, uh, yes, the classics. I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've already listened to your, your review of the new Resident Evil game. Very, very interesting stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. We also just what posted the Mass Effect review as well, John. Yeah, yeah. that was a lot of fun. It was. It <laughs> just was. Just, oh. John, you, you were so wrong how- about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew uh, when I listened in, like, the the first one is hard to get into. It just sucks that it's it's kind of necessary to actually understand what's going on in the second game. 
Uh, I mean, yeah, you do you do need to play it to in order to play the second one. You need to have like a a, a general understanding of what happened in the first game. Yeah, and I I still even though you know I still believe that uh you, you play the first one for the story and the characters and the world building. It's still mm-hmm. the gameplay is competent. It's not as terrible as uh, as, as some like to uh, color it as you know being. So I like to well, play if, a hyperbolic character on the show. Yeah, <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> if, well, if you take a time machine back into 2008, it'd be a lot more easier. Like, oh yeah, this was totally standard back then. But uh, yep. uh, anyway, I brought you guys on today not to talk about Mass Effect, but uh, of course that'll that'll happen no matter what. Because sure. yeah, there's I'm some controversy to, uh, with Mass Effect at some yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. But yeah, we're here to talk about some controversies in uh, in gaming and gaming culture. Because uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but uh, apparently there's been a couple more. Uh, instances lately of uh, some controversies and stuff and i thought who better to talk with it than uh my controversial video game reviewers uh uh chris and john so uh without further ado should we just get into it sure i just want to say are we are we big enough where we can have our own controversies right now john um, are we at that point now in well, our in our careers? Well, I think so. We have know. giant arguments about certain we things. Do. We do. I don't know, guys. If if your popularity ever starts to wane, I'm just saying sex tape. Okay. You, know, you, you and John? you know Chris, the Christian John sex tape. I don't know. Oh I'd ship God. it. I uh, did not think about that until just now, and I don't like what I'm seeing. <laughs> Power bottom right think, here. I think it would be cute. I think you can combine your names together, Cron or Jizz. Oh wait, no. Jizz? Okay, that's Jizz wrong. Jizz is probably Jizz. no. That's probably the right one. Yeah, I like Cron. Yeah, that sounds strong. It sounds like a that's, 90s robot. Yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> All right, let's let's wipe our brains of that mental image. Yeah, and uh, let's talk about something uh, a little more palatable. Oh, uh, PewDiePie uh, did some Nazi-related stuff. Uh, yeah, you know, isn't everyone nowadays? You know, I mean, our, isn't our president? He's tw- you know retweeting you know neo Nazis and alt right thinkers. I mean, it's everyone's to, doing it now. To be fair, Chris, he's not pro- propagating Nazis. He's just not saying that they're bad. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is true. He's just saying the the free press is bad. <laughs> Anyone that disagrees with him is bad. You're you're absolutely right, Nick. Thank you for now, that correction. <laughs> now you think? Now this is what confuses me. As gamers, aren't we trained to think that Nazis are bad? Like, aren't we... Isn't that ingrained in us? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, through our World War II shooters, definitely. I don't know what we've killed more of, Nazis or, or zombies. I really don't. Like, sometimes we even kill Nazi zombies. It's it's a thing that we do as gamers. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, you know, they're... All people are like, well, maybe we should give the Nazis a chance at this point. You know, we, they, we, you know, there's been so much negative coverage for so long. It's like, now let's hear them out. I think you know, <laughs> that's every, where we're at our like point. In, like in Wolfenstein, they need a nice rebrand. They you, do. A nice reboot, mm-hmm. right? They're, 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 I mean, you got to respect them for this. They have a wonderful fashion sense, right? So it's like, they well, do. maybe they might have some good ideas, right? <laughs> In a impeccable fashion. This is just going uh, off the off the rails already. <laughs> Here's the controversy. We're making the controversy right now. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> speaking of, uh, so uh, PewDiePie, yeah, he got into some trouble because of a couple, like a couple of his videos. Like it wasn't one particular video. Like there was a couple things. Uh, there was the one where he was wearing the Nazi uniform, watching a Hitler speech. Uh, that was supposed to be a joke over a YouTube policy he didn't agree with. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I think jokes should have punchlines, but apparently he di- he disagrees with me. Uh, and he used a internet service where you paid people like these poor people in a in a country money, and they would uh, do what you want. And he had him raise a sign that said "Death to all Jews." Uh, and a couple other a couple other videos as well. Like it, it was a it was like I think seven different instances. I think I think nine yeah, was, what, was the one that I it? read. Was it nine? Oh shit! Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I, maybe I'll, I didn't quite get as many, but uh, yeah. And uh, he got uh, dropped by Disney because Disney bought his uh, his channel, and right. Disney su- Disney surprisingly wanted to distance themselves from any anti-Semitic talk. Odd. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Walt's I mean, not around anymore, so not maybe yeah. it's like yeah, okay. We got. I guess. They, drop I that. guess they decided that that's not in fashion anymore. <laughs> so uh, oddly, they uh, they. <laughs> They uh, uh, dropped him, and he, of course, made a... Now, this is what gets me here, is that he makes an apology video, mm-hmm. but it's like a half-apology video. Yeah. Like, well, you know, I still think like you can make fun, you make jokes about anything, but maybe I didn't do it in the best way. And, all right, so let's get into this a little bit. Uh, do we think that PewDiePie 
was misrepresented by the media and was treated misfairly. Because I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm actually a little bit more mixed on this than I at first thought. But uh, let's hear your thoughts on it first. Uh, Chris, what do you think? I mean, I, I definitely have mixed feelings on it. I do think that the <clears throat> the media went a little too far in the representation of him as this, like, incredibly racist person. I mean, uh, I, I will say that I think his, his humor is extremely hit and miss. And, you know, I, I have not watched uh, many PewDiePie videos. I've just kind of gotten a, uh, to see a, some of his stuff and kind of get, like, a taste of him, if you will. And mm -hmm. uh, that sense of humor is just not really for me. Clearly, he, he, he she, cl clearly he's just trying to make uh, a reaction for some of the stuff. Yeah, so watch, you know, dressing up as a Nazi and, and watching these types of videos and things like that. Maybe to him, this is his um, uh, his, his way of being, you know. Uh, just trying to uh, generate a, a reaction which will get him more views. Like, I, he's more of a provocateur than anything else, you know? So maybe that's why I don't take him as seriously as someone who, who actually holds these views and actually believes in these things. Maybe he just doesn't have a, an understanding of, like, what he's particularly doing. Like, the one thing that kind of comes to mind that's not really related to this, but you can kind of equate it to, is like when, uh, Prince Harry dressed up as a Nazi at this, um, uh, at this party where you have to dress up as, like, the most, uh, horrible people from like uh from fiction or history or something like that and everyone kind of mm -hmm. you know re had a obviously a very negative reaction to that and maybe he just didn't have the common sense to realize like this could be potentially offensive and so maybe pewdiepie d doesn't just understand like uh why you know dressing up as a nazi and, and doing these types of things can can be offensive um i mean he has since like like you said like apologize and come out and saying that you know these i don't hold these views but I think it's half and half where he wants to generate a negative reaction. Maybe he doesn't particularly understand something like what he's actually doing. And, but, but then he's also has the thing where he wants to, you know, uh, create a joke. So I, I just, I don't think he, he did it, um, to, to uh, like uh, personally like offend anybody. But, you know, like you said, Nick, I, I just think it's, it's a mixed thing. And I think that people on both sides are just being a little too extreme. Yeah. Well, uh, I think I come at it from somewhat of that perspective. The, the one thing I'll disagree with is that I'm pretty sure he understood that this was going to be controversial. I think he was counting on it. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was counting on YouTube on uh, on Disney dropping him. No, but he not. he let, let's face it, he wanted to poke the bear and he wanted to create some controversy and yeah. he poked it a little too hard. And which happens is when you play with fire like that, and you have to understand that if you make if. I do agree with his statement that you can joke about anything, but mm -hmm. with the accepted caveat is that you have to be funny. Yeah. And in PewDiePie's defense, he is painfully unfunny. Uh, I want to go <laughs> with a little harsher. That man, it, you might think he's amusing or entertaining, sure, but you got to admit he's not very funny. He's he's not clever about his jokes. He basically screams into a microphone. And his idea of as a joke of a of a joke is to dress up like a Nazi and not have a a joke has a setup and a punchline. You had a setup and you didn't have a punchline for it. Mm -hmm. And did people take him out of context? Did, did the media take him out of context? Sure, some of them did. Some of them did mention that it was a joke and that they didn't think it was funny. But some of them took him at his face value. Yeah. Uh, but I think that maybe you should make your video more explicit that it is a joke so it's not so easily taken out of context sure so i i think that you know it's not that the media is blameless but like it's <laughs> man he uh, the thing i don't like is that in the apology video is just like this kind of woe is me mentality for like i i thought we had like free speech is like yeah but that doesn't mean the right you have the right to be uh be partners with Disney or it gives you the right it means you can say whatever you want and that that people can react however they want. So if people react negatively to your video that is their right as well. Like Absolutely. This this freedom of speech thing goes both ways. Uh and it's not like this is the first offense. It's like not like the first time <clears throat> it was taken out of context. Like it's, it, like you said it was nine videos. Yeah. And Disney was just like, "Okay, man, we can't have you on here. You're bad for our public image." And we don't want that sort of thing on here. So uh, I gotta, sure. I gotta side and that's, with that's Disney. Disney's decision to do that. Mm -hmm. So, and if PewDiePie loses revenue over this, it was it was his decision, and I think that he knew he was going to be. Uh, I think he was counting on the controversy to up his his views and get him into the public consciousness again, and he uh, just took it 
uh, way too far. He should have been more clever about it. If he would, if he had taken the time to write a clever joke, I think people would have, you know, come more to his defense. But it's hard to defend a joke that's basically just, I dressed up as a Nazi. Isn't that funny? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, John, what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, the initial video, I think it was New York Times or maybe Washington Post. I can't remember. Wall, I think it was the Wall Street, Wall Street uh, Journal. Journal. Okay. Incident, yeah. Uh, yeah. One of those black and white <laughs> newspapers. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, those I, black and white ones. They're <laughs> online too now. <laughs> I, I know. But I remember seeing the initial video and it's a lot of out, out of context yeah. snippets of the videos, just the most extreme parts. And so I do think the, the that sort of situation, he was very misrepresented mm-hmm. in what was what was – you know, going on, it's a, most people might not in the mainstream really know who PewDiePie is or no. what he does or the fact that he does just kind of, he's a pro- provocateur, like Chris said, said, and that he is just usually shouting and very extreme. So they might not have understood that kind of context. Uh, that being mm-hmm. said, I think he, the, he has been playing this victim role since is like, yes. you know, I thought we had free speech. Like, why is the media attacking me? And in doing so, he's also kind of attacked the more extreme of his uh, viewer base mm-hmm. onto certain segments of the media, um, attacking them online as well. So, yeah. like, he's instigating. Them. Yeah, he's instigating it, um, not telling them to stop. And it's just more of a you. You got to know your. Con- you got to deal with your consequences. Yeah. You, if you know you're dealing with controversial subject matter, which I know he knew he was. And Mm -hmm. you have to be aware and prepared that some people will take it out of context and might not understand. And so, like Chris had said, Disney is very much in their right to pull away from him to Mm -hmm. protect their business. It's it's not so much a free speech issue, which like yeah, I never no one is no one told him he couldn't do that. Yeah, he can do that if he wants. Like free speech says you can say whatever you want, but it doesn't say there aren't consequences to what you do, especially when you start dealing with the kind of money he pulls in and the kind (laughs) of money Disney has. Yeah, and I think. at that point, it's like if you're if you're at the top of the mountain, you have to be prepared that you're going to fall at some point. Mm, and sure. he just needs to stop being a baby. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and to give him credit, he has raised money for charities. Uh, that was one of his other thing in his videos that no one said no one gave gave him credit for that. Uh, which for me, I'm just like, yeah, a good deed a good deed doesn't erase your sins. But to his credit, he has raised money for charities before, so he's done good work. Uh, but part of being a content provider is knowing your audience. And if he didn't realize that this was going to be bad for his audience, or let's, let's take it on a personal level. Like, if I am a Jewish viewer of PewDiePie, and I saw these comments, and I saw that he's being supported by uh, these uh, Nazi groups, and they're sending him support and, uh, like, uh, material, like, propaganda materials and he's not his next video isn't outright condemning them and saying hey i'm not with you guys stop sending me this suddenly a guy that i i looked up to suddenly i'm like oh he just made me feel shitty about myself even if i even if i learn later about his context he he did it for a joke and i and i you know uh was offended by it on a a, a very personal level and this guy i respected didn't have enough respect for me to make the joke funny or to condemn the supporters from the party. I don't know. I just think there was a, a lot, a lot of easier way to handle it. And I feel like in our current, uh, our current political situation, I feel like it's a lot easier to just go, see, these people won't let me say whatever I want. They're harping my free speech. Oh, poor me. And I feel like it's so easy to slip into the defense that people aren't even trying to self reflect. And, to his to his credit, he does give the half apology. He's like, "Oh, well, maybe I didn't do about it the right way." So he's, I think he kind of is self reflecting, but s- still, it's, it, I, I think things think things through, people. Like, I mean, that, that, uh, that's what it is at the end of the day. Is is I just think that this this entire situation with PewDiePie was just exacerbated to a point where it got. Uh, bigger than I think it needed to be. You know, I think the the way in which some media outlets represented him was not the best. I think that the uh, his the joke itself wasn't particularly funny. But then again, you know, humor is subjective. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. maybe some people did find this funny. Maybe people caught the joke, and other people didn't. But at the same time, 
I think he just he needs to address it in in the right way. You know, uh, I think yeah, he, he like he said uh, he apologized. Maybe you know, like a half apology is, is is probably wasn't the best way to do it. But at the end of the day, I mean, this 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 entire situation is just so mixed, and to ha- to just kind of come out with a definitive like this is the way it is, I just don't think you can. Yeah, you know, and for, for for me personally, that's just how I feel. I also don't really like that. Uh, the charity's response that he gave. I'm sure that has been covered in the past, but it's kind of like yeah. if I kick a dog today. Me saying I fed a dog three days ago doesn't yeah. correct the fact that I kicked he, a dog today. I mean, yeah, I mean that's the thing. He's he's just trying to defend himself. It's like you don't don't, don't need to do yeah, that. Yeah, just apologize yeah. and move on. Like yeah. I'm sure yeah. I'm sure a lot of your viewers and maybe in Disney would be like, okay, mm-hmm. like you just just yeah. say I messed up and then just move on. And I yeah. think. That's just a problem with a lot of people in general. Mm-hmm. They have a hard time just admitting that they messed up oh, and like, yeah. moving on. Especially so, now. like, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that that also comes with being a celebrity, and he is an mm-hmm. internet celebrity. But that comes with a certain level of uh, ego that comes with it. That's like, oh, well, you know, I couldn't have fucked up that bad. Come on, like, and uh, it's always a risk because then when you when you say like, come on, guys, it was a joke, didn't you get it? You're starting to try and alienate your audience like, oh, well, if you didn't laugh, it's obviously your problem and not me. And you, it, it can come off as a little bit arrogant, but uh, you know what? Let's, let's take it back to the classics. Uh, <laughs> Gamergate is kind of like where this – it's not where it all started because the gamer culture has always been a little, you know, uh, hyper-masculine, a little aggro. But I, don't, I think it's, it's never hit its fever pitch like – uh, what happened in Gamergate. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the, the, the thing with that there is that the, the level of harassment that happened to the, uh, the one, uh, female developer, ah, uh, man, I had her name here. Zoe Quinn. Yes, Zoe Quinn. That, uh, thank you, Chris. Yep. Uh, she, uh, was independent game developer. Yep. I think she, she actually made, like, a couple Flash games, one about, uh, dealing with depression. Uh, it, it was, they're actually really interesting, uh, interesting kind of, uh, emotional simulator sort of things. Mm-hmm. So she, uh, got, got into a controversy of like, uh, of apparently g- got accused of cheating on some, on her, uh, boyfriend with someone from like Kotaku, uh, uh, journalist, like he, or he, uh, said that he was a fellow programmer and suddenly the, after the claim, uh, uh, apparently, she, like he said that she uh, did that so that sh- she could get better reviews on her games or s- something. Uh, the claims were never uh, never founded in any sort of reality. There was never any proof behind that. Yeah. And suddenly, the internet decided to be a dick to her, like in the biggest possible way, to the point where the they actually got so bad they actually like uh, I forget she had to leave leave her house because they posted like pictures of where she lived. Uh, and, uh, talking about like, give, and, and having death threats and rape threats. And it's, it was just one of the most ugly experiences I've ever seen. And it sucks because, uh, it, it actually, it actually made me kind of closeted about my gaming. Like I'm never really comfortable telling, like for a while I was, I wasn't not actually comfortable telling people I was a gamer because, uh, or even considering myself a gamer because I was just like, well, I don't want to be, as- I don't even want to be associated with people like that, even if they are only a, a vocal minority, which I still think they are. Uh, but yeah, do you guys remember the, uh, your feelings on a, a gamer game while it was happening? Well, yeah, I mean, when I was, uh, yeah, I think that the original story was is that, you know, Zoe Quinn, she was accused of, um, uh, she was in a, apparently in a relationship with, um, a journalist from Kotaku. Uh, and she was yeah. accused of basically sleeping with him to get a, a better review for her game. It, it you know, it was re- eventually revealed that, you know, that he, this individual did not even review the game. And the only time that mm-hmm. he actually wrote about Zoe Quinn was in, in a story, I think, uh, not even, um, kind of specifically talking about the game itself. Um, and yeah, then it, kind of this, this story came out, uh, that, or from a former, a boyfriend that kind of wrote this like lengthy disparaging kind of blog post about her, you know, obviously mm-hmm. you know making all this stuff up and you know posting it on Reddit and 4chan and 8chan, which are just like these hotbeds <laughs> of negativity, you know, and not only in gaming culture but like everything. It's just the the worst of the worst in, in general. Um, if the internet, if the internet was a Mad Max movie, the f- 4chan and and the, and its like would be like the barren land, like the wasteland, like the, no one goes there. Very- Only, oh, 
Only the mutants go there. Very, very much so. Yeah, the Morlocks from X Men, as I like to say. Uh, but, yeah, the Morlocks. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but don't yeah, it, disparage the Morlocks. Some of those guys are cool. Ah, uh, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're really not. The reason why there haven't been any of the X Men movies yet. Um, but yeah, and, and the thing was, it's just it, this 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 situation. The, the the problem was is that these people that eventually started calling them Gamergate, the, uh, themselves Gamergate, their 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 movement Gamergate. You know, these were just internet trolls, and they originally at least wanted to present themselves as that they just wanted to go after journalists who weren't being, you know, um, uh, truthful. Or, you know, basically they're, they're going after poor journalistic ethics. And this was, you know, proved to be like a false facade. They were there to, mm-hmm. you know, to to kind of uh, promote their misogynistic behavior against, you know, feminism, against multiculturalism, you know, um, against, you know, political correctness. In their minds, what they felt was like being too politically correct. Um, and it, 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 to, to the point where they just started this horribly negative campaign against not only, you know, Zoe Quinn, but also other members of, of the industry, you know, including, I think, yeah. uh, 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 feminist uh, media Sarkeesian. critic. Yeah, Anita uh, uh, Sarkeesian. Actually got in there, yeah. She did. And she oh. was, I mean, she got uh, threatened, uh, you know, uh, Obviously, ever since then, still does to this day, and I guess you know my my whole thing is is that yeah, this shows how negative video game culture can be. And at the time, I just didn't re- you know when I started seeing this whole thing you know start to spiral out of control, it made me realize like wow, I just didn't know that there was so much hate within the uh, within the you know the, the people that that play video games within the industry itself yeah. you know the the people that appreciate video games and it kind of made me check you know and realize like yeah it is a very kind of male dominant culture you know male young males and that yeah I've ever since then I've, I've looked at like you know uh, female let's players or female developers or producers or you know heads of studios or, or female uh, uh, critics you know or journalists the 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 vitriol that they receive is is I mean, it's so ridiculous, and it, it just it makes me realize, like, wow, I, 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 I don't want any a part of, I don't want any part of this, and that's why, you know, I've always tried to maintain, you know, at least for the most part. I mean, John and I joke, you know, back and forth, of course, about certain things, but you know, we always want to be uh, positive about that and lift up anyone who, you know, is is contributing great stuff to the video game industry, no matter what their race or or, or you know or sex or gender is, you know. That, but I hate the fact that these individuals, these gamergate people, have a platform, and they're just kind of part of the larger kind of alt right misogynistic movement. You know, and it's just sad. And so, yeah, I, I absolutely felt sorry for, for Zoe Quinn, Brianna uh, Wu, who was also a part of this, and, of course, uh, Anita Sikirzian. You know, it's just the whole situation was just uh, terrible. Yeah, it, it was an eye-opener because it's it, – you're right. It's it's hard when you're, you know, like, oh, I, me and my friends, we play video games and isn't it awesome? And it, it's great where yeah. we live in this virtual world of imagination. And then suddenly this ugly beast rises rises its head and it says, we, uh, like, you're one of us. And I'm like, ah, I'm not with you guys. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you guys are, but I'm definitely not with you. Uh I think it, Quinn was also quoted as saying, she said, I don't think I've ever released a game without getting some sort of rape threat. Yeah. That, that is, God, that's depressing. That is so off. Like, you, like, how many times have us three been on the internet, how many times have we been threatened, uh, much less, you know, much less threatened physically, but threatened with rape? Never. That is, it's so like, I don't, I, as a white male, I'm just kind of like, man, the things that I don't even think about, like, it never even factors into my day. And she, every time she she releases a game, she's got to get deal with these threats. That's just messed up. Uh, but yeah, the I don't know. Maybe it's the idea of just the the people that were oppressed become the oppressors, sort of thing. Because you know, yeah. gamers used to be you know uh, back in the day, it was kind of like oh the, we were the nerds, the outcasts, and you know picked on and then you know we escape into via you know tabletop games we escaped into comics and into, into uh, movies into our secular geek culture and then into video games as well and you kind of see that creep in of this like you know the abused become the abusers to where people don't want fake like or you know we have the term filthy casuals like like oh you're not a real gamer if you don't play this or like it's such a weird thing. I've never seen someone not want everyone to enjoy the medium that they take place in. Like, no, this is just for us, not and no one else can have it. Like, no one else can play with us. It's like, 
this such a weird uh irony uh, of that of being so exclusive when the the they would they probably wouldn't be uh in in this in this mindset if they weren't excluded to begin with yeah no i i absolutely agree it, it's 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 always yeah it's always puzzled me too is like these people that you know maybe it, throughout life i don't want to characterize like everyone who who loves geek culture or film or video games they're all like this that's obviously not not true but for whatever reason it seems to be the loudest voices are always the most negative you know in, in mm-hmm. this case and these people whoever you know they have chips on their sh- uh, on their shoulders and they just they want to just hurt someone, you know, online. Of course, it also helps that many of these people rename uh, anonymous, you know, and they're able to say these things without any type of, you know, uh, uh, being reprimanded for for their actions or their words. And so, yeah, it's always puzzled me, like, why they go out of their way to do this, especially, you know, I, I just don't know how someone can spend hours upon hours upon hours every day just vehemently going after someone for whatever reason, you know, it just, it, that never really makes sense to me. It's like, don't you, can you spend your time in a more, uh, um, you know, a, a better way? You know, I just, I just right. particularly just never understood that. So, I mean, that, that's just me. Yeah. I think it's, um, I think a lot of it is fear based, mm. uh, a fear of you're losing your thing. It, it, it has to do around you identify yourself so much with this certain, uh, you know, whether that be activity or something, something like that, which on, in the first place, I think it's kind of bad. It's a bad thing to do to, I, to label yourself. I think labels in general are awful. Uh, but it, it becomes that thing when this is what I identify as and I see that it's changing. And what does that mean for my self identity? If what I enjoy is starting to change and in a way kind of lose grip. Uh, I see this also. It, I think Gamergate is a perfect for, foreboding, uh, movement to kind of what's going on in the political landscape where we see a certain segment of people kind of rising up and i've kind of talked to my friends about it who like i went to a small country school uh so i kind of am around a bunch of conservative people all the time and like i uh, some of my friends like they agree with the other side and i can kind of see it in certain ways and I, i do at the same time kind of see this like certain bit of fear in the fact that there are new people who have you find yourself in a different spot that you don't want to be in and you associate it with, well, these other people who weren't there even in the game before are now in a better spot. Um, and so you fear for yourself and your like own well being and this kind of like your own status in, in society. And so you have to push back against it is the way I see it. Um, I, I myself, I was pretty detached from the gamer community at this point in time. Cause this is the middle of me being in college, mm. which I like, that's when I game the least. And it's kind of funny. Uh, when I gamed in high school, I was a little less conscious. I was just always playing games and like just doing whatever, hanging out with my friends. And I was also a mixed bag. Whereas like, like I've talked to Chris before, I was like on the football team and also on the band. So like, I never really identified myself as a gamer or anything really. I think growing up as a Hispanic male, like I've tried to disassociate myself with any sort of label per se. I've always just been like, I am Jonathan. That is who I am. That is my only label you can give me. Um, so it was funny. And I, I kind of want to say, I'm, I, I think I'm a little glad that this happened because coming out of college when I could start gaming again and now like I'll, I'll notice it when I'm talking to Chris, when I notice some sort of misrepresentation or just, I think we were talking about the latest Mass Effect trailer once and I was just like, why is it a white guy? And that bothers me. Mm. And I think the fact that now I feel the need to at least point that out and you know maybe push back against some people i i see i see places like polygon you know other writers like that kind of pushing back a little more than i think we would have before and i think that's caused by this there there are going to be some uh you know negative aspects to that like a lot of the rape threats um which but i think that's i think in the end game it's it's causing more people to speak up the positive sides are starting to speak up a lot more because i think we realize we need to yeah it, it puts it out there for people to know about that that this is happening that this yeah. has always been a part of a gaming culture you know i mean it's yeah. in a way it's yeah like john said it's it's i'm glad that it's out there now so yeah totally agree john no, that's a that's a good point, John. Uh, but uh, I was just thinking about like that your "I am Jonathan, I am Spartacus" line. Uh, I was thinking like just you in elementary school during roll call. I was like, "All right, is everybody here?" Timmy, like, "Yeah, present." Like, and uh, I'm sorry, who's this? I am Jonathan. <laughs> uh, just your best uh, uh, Russell Crowe impression. You got to own uh, your name. Yes, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I 
it, it was kind of this foreshadowing event because even even now we have stuff like you know the PewDiePie thing that has merits. I mean, I come down on the negative, like yeah, I don't think it was. I don't think it was as big a deal that he was as misrepresented, but you can argue that point. Then there's stuff like Tracer being gay that's somehow still a controversial thing to where, oh, yeah. like, <laughs> like some of the, the dumbest comments I've ever seen, which was just like, man, if I had, if I had known that this, uh, they were going to propagate a gay character, I wouldn't have given this game my money. But that one had a great response that I, I think I have it saved on my phone somewhere where the, the comment underneath it was just like, too late. Your, your money is gay now. <laughs> uh yeah well i'll even say like to my point earlier about the positive voices getting louder i saw very few negative things about that i, I don't know if i just actively kind of avoid yeah. them but o- overall i saw a lot of positive coverage around it like yeah like of course whatever i i yeah exactly i i either saw positive coverage or people just didn't care like Okay, that's fine. Like, Whatever. Sure. That's just the way it is. I'm going to play the game the yeah. exact same she's, way. She's still a great character. It doesn't matter if she's gay or not. It's just like, yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah, the, I did see a lot of, like, I saw the, some controversial stuff, but most of it was in, like, uh, there was res- much response to it, which yeah. uh, was very telling. Uh, and, uh, of course, there's the Laura Croft uh, movie coming out, and uh, apparently a big argument was over, are her, are, is the main actress's breasts big enough? And I that even- was, like, a big... I didn't even hear about this. No, one. yeah, I had, I remember seeing this one. I think it was it Birth Movies Death or something awful dot com. One of their guys yeah. tweeted something. Oh, was it the guy yeah, it that? Was, uh, what's it was his something name? awful. Yeah, he uh, and was like, it, was it was it Devin Farachi who's no longer there anymore? I think so. It was. Oh, was it might it? no, no, it, it might sense. not have been him, but it might have been under his watch. Is was yeah, like yeah, so like no. the his second controversy led mm-hmm. up to that. But yeah, I remember that sort of instance. In a way, again, I try when these things come up, I try and kind of get a levelness of understanding from the other yeah. side. So like even with the tracer thing or even gay topics in general because as a religious person like i can see that other side and i kind of get why they're upset about certain things Mm -hmm. but maybe i'm just so laissez-faire i'm Mm -hmm. just like it doesn't matter it's not it's not my life like yeah i mean that's that's how i kind of yeah who who cares um whereas like with the laura croft thing i was like well i guess you know if some people gamers have this idea of this is who laura croft looks like i get that i'm not saying i agree with it because at this point like the new Laura, I think she represents something much better than the old one even tried to ever represent. And to me, yeah. that's who Laura Croft is now. She's this mm-hmm. slender but mentally strong female. Um, she's a survivor. I mean, she's that's, a survivor. That's, that's the only she's thing a survivor I ever think first. About, yeah, uh, her as now. She's a survivor. Uh, yeah. And um, I just think she, Alicia Vikander, just is beautiful woman in no. general. So like, no, she's whatever. Beautiful. I'm all she, for it. She's beautiful. She's talented. And I'm sure she's going to do a great job. That's actually one of the few video game that, films that I think yeah, is going to, that should have been the first, be the good. first thing. Like we have yeah. quality people attached exactly. to the Tomb Raider movie. Yeah. Uh, fuck. I'm all for that. I mean, her, her breast size never even, I, I was like, I don't care. Why do you people complain about this? Yeah. <laughs> to, to be, to be fair, like uh, the, when, when I saw Alicia Vikander, it's like, she is actually too good for a video game. Movie. I know that's she's just, actually that's the thing. she's slumming it being in a video game movie. Yeah. you should thank your lucky stars. You have an Oscar winner being in a video game, and you should thank your. I don't see anyone you know complaining about Walton Goggins' dick size or something. I know right? uh, they're just like, hey, Walton Goggins is a fucking awesome choice to be a villain. Exactly, we're all behind that. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't want my villains to have too small a dick though. So, like, if that ever gets out, I might speak up. Oh, okay, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know. Uh, the, I, can sp- I can speak from, uh, I-, I can't say why, but, uh, why I know this, but trust me, Walton Goggins is hung like a horse. Oh, okay. It was, it was a crazy weekend in Vegas. Just just trust me on this, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, want, I want there to see. Is, I, oh, okay, go ahead, Nick. <laughs> there, there is no problem down there. It's all fine. There's nothing wrong. He's got large hands. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I just want to get one more digging at Trump. Uh, you were saying, Chris? No, I was just going to say, well, unless we get, like, dickless uh, Walton Goggins from Django Unchained. You know, when Jimmy Fox shot his dick off. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, in that case, there you go. This Damn conversation you, got weird. <laughs> I don't know. I think all conversations should somehow end on Walton Goggins, Walton Goggins' dick. It, it does. Uh, well, he's all, a very talented guy. All so. true ones that, yes. uh, you know, that come from the heart. Uh, and apparently, what's in my heart? Apparently, Walton Goggins' dick. Mm-hmm. As it should uh, be. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's you. John brought up the. I think the exact thing that we can do in order to curb this, which is a thing we are doing now, which is to, when we see it, we speak out, we add our voices to the pile to make sure that we we let the people know that like, hey, this is a vocal minority. We got your back. 
And I remember a controversy with uh, Steven Universe a little bit back, one of my favorite shows. And um, there was a controversy between a pairing of characters on there, and one of the an- one of the animators got uh, uh, death threats over it. And I remember sending her a personal email. I found her personal email account and sent her a. Uh, I took five minutes out of my time and wrote her an, a, a letter saying that we that we here at the podcast supported her and that I knew at least three Steven Universe fans that think she what she's doing is great. And I don't know, I think that if if we at least take the time out to uh spread a message of of support, I think that's that's probably the answer. That's the best answer. Mm-hmm. Uh cuz the idea of ignoring it and hoping it will go away has not been working out for us. So no. I think it's we we should really kind of speak up speak up and say like, "Hey, if we as a we we as gamers, we're not represented by these people." Uh which is happening in the gamer community and I think is also happening politically yeah. uh, in, our, in, our, in our current climate as well, which is a, it's just a nice thing to see uh, in dark times like these. Uh, it's actually a source of inspiration for me. No, it, it, but, it uh, just goes to show you that there there is common sense. There are people out there of common sense and, you know, respectability. So it's just like, okay, thank God. You know? <laughs> right. I'm not alone in here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, but yeah, with that, uh, I think uh, we've we've covered all the controversies and avoided creating controversies of our own. Unless Walton Goggins' dick is controversial in yeah, some way, yeah. I don't I don't see how it could I, be. I, I'm sure those comments I made about the Nazis, you know, having a nice dress code won't be controversial. At all. <laughs> I don't think that's controversial. They, no, hey, I mean, you have to admit. they liked leather. That and, was a big thing. And doo doo brown, apparently. Yeah, so. doo doo brown. That's right. They were smartly dressed monsters. Yes, let's admit they, it, yes, okay? they were. <laughs> Gotta give them that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but with that, I think we can, uh, uh, wrap this one up. You want to okay. remind people where they can find you on the, on the internets, on the interwebs, uh, the We Are Error stuff. Sure. Uh, before we get out of here. Sure. Well, you can, uh, follow us on Twitter at We Are Error Cast. You can follow me at Chris J. Herman. Oh, and I am underscore John Romo on Twitter. I did want to bring something up. I, I kind of hinted at it at the beginning. Uh, we don't have to go into a deep dive, but there was a sexual controversy regarding having sex in Mass Effect uh, for a whole oh, two geez. weeks. Oh. Y'all remember that? Yeah. I Go remember that. Oh, but that was actually one of the times where the uh, the internet justice was was fun because uh, the uh, I for, forget the woman, the accuser. Who, yeah, she. Yeah, you go ahead, Nick. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's the uh, the woman acu- uh, criticized it without having played the game. So uh, a bunch of uh, uh, a bunch of people went on the, went online and and rated her book on Amazon without reading it. So uh, that's true, and they and they kept I, doing that for her uh, her her next several books as well. <laughs> you know, for years. Yes. And I always know it's like the the time period in which their book is released. They're saying, but I can't wait to play Mass Effect two after giving her her book like a really shitty review. So in that case, yeah. it's like you know, <laughs> that's fucking great. I, it is, yeah. The inter- I, I always said this, the internet is like Godzilla or a giant kaiju monster. It can either be on your side or it can just totally destroy whatever it's in its path. It kind of depends on the scenario. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes it's a, in a force for good, but sometimes it is a just, just destructive and, and chaos. So you have to treat it like, like a giant kaiju monster sometimes. Yeah, and sometimes it spins an entire movie just kind of avoiding the screen the entire time, and oh, then yeah. in the last five minutes it finally shows up to do something <laughs> cool, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's... I don't think the internet has ever been that boring. No, uh, no but, certainly hasn't. <laughs> sorry, Gareth Edward fans. Ah, uh, Rogue, uh, but Rogue One was great. Rogue One was good. Yeah, Rogue, Rogue One was good. fun. It was totally okay. Oh, John. Yeah, it's totally good. <laughs> Uh, every party needs a pooper. That's why we yeah. invite John. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yes, check out their stuff, and uh, we will be back right with our regularly scheduled programming right after this. They call me Commander Shepard. I mess up, get blown, everything get together. Uh, then you never can escape the specter, and you can't get better than my kill death record. Cause I died once, won't happen twice. Thanks, over it. Now get a life. This war ain't just about humans. I'm trying to keep the galaxy for going with the ruins. Doesn't matter what plan ain't wrong, cause it will not last for long. We must attack when they come back from black space, or the Reapers will have won. I have a passion that burns on. Earth is a world I can't turn on. Matter of fact, I will protect all with a mass effect that's in my car. And welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that interview with, uh, with that, or that talk, really just in-depth discussion about some uh, gamer culture with the We Are Air crew. 
Uh, man, I love those guys. Love that, love that Chris and John. They're pretty fun. Uh, yeah, love talking to some uh, Walton Goggins dick with them. Uh, that that will still don't think there's context for that. That that will make sense with context. Mm. Yeah, you guys don't know about it, but the list the listeners who just listen to it, they they know what I'm talking about. I don't know, man. Uh, but yeah, uh, some great guys. Make sure you go and check out their content again at uh, the We Are Error site or, or no, the, on uh, oneofus.net, uh, where they're where they're uh, podcast is or just look them up on iTunes. Uh, give them a look. Just does some great great work. And uh, love having him on the show, like always. And with that, I think we can wrap up this episode and uh, say goodbye to all you lovely people. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to listen to some of our other previous content, all our back catalog is available on iTunes and Stitcher of all our previous UGO episodes, along with our Netflix and Kills. Some movie reviews are on there. Uh, a lot of fun stuff, so uh, definitely give it a, give it a look. Uh, if you're interested in helping out the podcast visibility-wise, you can always give us a review on iTunes. Uh, that definitely helps us out. Uh, if you want to give us a five-star review, we will read it on the air word for word. That is my guarantee. Uh, helps helps us out with visibility. So if you want to put in a little uh, ad read for something you're working on, something you're passionate about, or if you just want me to say something silly, uh, keep that in mind because there's always an option available to you. Uh, and of course, if you'd like to contact us maybe give us a suggestion on a episode topic or just shoot the shit with us about anything you know movies tv comics walton goggins dick whatever it is i would love to talk to you about it uh especially the the latter uh and you can do so at our facebook page uh unapologetic geek out or uh no we switched it to ugo on on uh facebook that's right give us a like while you're there uh, of course, we got the Twitter at UGO Podcast and our Instagram at UGO Podcast. If you're in PlatCon right now, we'll have some pictures going up, probably of some neat cosplay and some cool art and all that good jazz that we see there usually. You know, some some people playing some games, some board games and all that good jazz. And, uh, yeah, with that, I think uh, we can just call this one a wrap and we'll, we'll get on, right on out here. We are on a positive geek out and we're out. Stock prices. Yeah. Prices. Yeah, really wants to know now. I don't know. I think that's a smart investment. Yeah.